Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be creating a to-do list application that says sign up and sign in. So here is the profile of the user that is currently signed in. Uh, we can click the user and then we're going to be able to sign out or manage the account. Also, we are going to implement a top loader here. So when I navigate to the important tasks, you're going to see there's going to be a loader here. Okay, and uh, when I go to completed, you're going to see the tasks that are completed and you're also going to see the loader as I navigate to other pages. Okay, and uh, so this is the main page. We can uh, create a new task. I'm going to say, hello world. And then I'm just going to say, hello world. Okay, world. And uh, here I'm just going to uh, set a random date. And then uh, we can toggle if the task is completed or it's important. So I'm just going to make this important and completed. It's not going to be completed. So when I click create task, you're going to see there it is. The newly created task is going to be at the top. Hello world. We can toggle completed. So when I click complete, as you can see, we have uh, we have a toast that shows us the task has been updated. We can you know update the task as well. As much as many times as you want. Uh, we can also delete any of these tasks. When I delete, it's going to show us uh, the task has been deleted. All right. And uh, so when I go to the do it now page, you're going to see the hello world is going to be there. But when I click incomplete, it's, it's no longer here. So it's completed. As you can see now, the hello world is now incompleted. Okay, and uh, this uh, project is also uh, responsive. We can click, I mean, we can also add the task from this pattern here as well. Okay, so to show you the project responsive, I'm going to make the screen smaller. So I am going to select for iPhone 12 Pro. As you can see, it looks even good on iPhone. We can uh, create task, we can, you know, show the sidebar and hide the sidebar uh here's how it looks okay it's uh really responsive as you can see the sidebar is going to be hidden on smaller screens okay we have multiple ways to create the tasks where so we have a task and this pattern here so this pattern is always is always going to be at the top so when i make the screen even smaller as you can see, it's always going to be at the top. So when you scroll all the way down here, you can still click and add a new task. You can open and close the sidebar. Okay, so that's it for the demonstration for this project. So I just want to show you why I was away. I was on holiday and the other thing, I was also building my website. So it's still under development. So I'll just show you a quick demonstration. So here's the homepage. All right, and uh, we can toggle the light and dark mode. Okay, and uh, we have the courses page, so it's loading. And uh, here's the only video I have at the moment because I'm still testing. So you can, you know, kind of uh, sign up for the, if you wanna see the video, uh, some resources. So if you wanna see more, you have to sign in lessons you can click any of these lessons you can watch it on youtube you can view the source code and we can go to the blogs so this data is just random so i was just testing how it would look and style this page and uh, this is how it's going to look like okay i'm still making the content for this website so maybe next year i should have a lot of content to put here uh let's say we want to um we want to watch this video. So when I click, it's going to take us to the sign in page and then we'll let's sign in. So if, by the way, if you wanna send me an email about anything, just, you know, my email already, um, just go to the, disc, uh, to the about section on YouTube. You can see my email or you can see it when I signed in, there was my email there. So now, uh, we can go to courses and I can click this video. And uh, oops, we're going to be able to watch this video. 
okay and uh there's gonna be the description here we can also change the theme to a light theme we can open the sidebar here oh i need to fix this button here on on the light theme so it doesn't show nicely here so i'm just going to change this color here uh we can now go back to the home page we can go to the resources we can see resources we can filter uh, these resources also the lessons we can filter if we have a lot of lessons uh, i didn't put the filtering system on the blog section but i'm still developing this website uh, i will let you know if there's more stuff that have that have been added but uh, if you want to check it out just uh, visit the codealer.com and you can check it out for yourself okay so yeah uh, i'll see you in the video all right so I'm going to start by creating a new project. So go to the terminal. Make sure you're in the folder which you want your project to be in. I'm going to run npx, and then create, and then next app. And then we're going to be using the latest version. So I'm just going to name this app my tasks. You can name this whatever you want. So you're going to be asked if you want to use uh, TypeScript. You can select yes or no. It's up to you. I'm going to be doing yes. And then Tailwind CSS, yes. We're not going to be entirely using Tailwind CSS, but we might want to use some utility classes from Tailwind. So I'm just going to do yes, and then no for the source directory, and then yes for the app router. And then it's going to create the project for you. Just wait. It's going to take a few seconds, depending on how quick your internet is. Okay. Uh, it should be done by now. Okay, so once it's done, you can CD into that folder or you can manually open the folder like this and then select that folder and then select. Now we're in the folder. Let's go to the terminal. So in the terminal, we can run npm run dev. Uh, this should be in localhost 3000. So this is the final project. Okay. So, um, it should be local host 3000. Okay, it's taking time to compile. I'm going to close this. Okay, so let's go in the app directory in the page. We're going to collapse the main. First off, let's see if it's working. There it is. There's the starter page. I'm going to collapse the main and remove this. Okay, and then there's a, an empty main. Let's go to the global CSS. In the global, I'm just going to get rid of everything except the Tailwind utilities. Okay, so now it's empty. So, um, let's see, what can we start with? Let's start with uh, the global, okay? So, uh, in here, I'm just going to set a background color and a font size and a color, a default color of white in the body. Okay, so body like this. Actually, I think I will return back some styles here. Uh, I'll leave the root as it is and the media. I'll just get rid of stuff in the body. And then why do I have auto completion? Okay, here I'm going to do background color. So this is the 1818. 1818 okay a black color and then the default color is going to be white okay so this is our nice background i'm going to give it a height of 100 vh okay that's for the body so let's start with the sidebar and then we do the main content so for the sidebar i'm going to create some components 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 for styling it's up to you you can use sas or you can use style components but i'm way i'm very used to style components npm it's up to you what what you use so uh styled components components okay so what we need to do now is just work on the sidebar Okay, 
So for the sidebar, um, let's create a, oops, a new folder in here. It's going to be sidebar. And then we're going to create another component. It's going to be button. Okay, so let's start with the sidebar. Let's have a sidebar here, sidebar.tsx. So this is going to be a client component. So make sure you do use client at the top. We're using next 13. Use client. Okay, so we should have a sidebar. So uh, we want to uh, render the sidebar. Okay, so where can we show this sidebar? Uh, let's create a new folder. Let's name it um, providers. Okay, you can create it outside of this app directory, that's fine. But what is better to create it in the app directory? Okay, so let's go to the layout. Layout in here uh, above the children. We're going to render the sidebar sidebar okay so we should have a sidebar right here okay sidebar so uh the, the we need to display flex the sidebar and the main content so i'm just gonna go to the page i'm just gonna say main oops content wrong spelling content okay so there's sidebar and content so we're going to display flex so this is the sidebar and the content so to do that to display flex we need to go to the layout so the sidebar and the children so we're going to put this in a wrapper okay so the wrapper is going to be in the providers i'm just going to name it global styles provider dot uh, you, so the gro global style provider you can it's a tsx file okay global oops style provider dot tsx like that so this is going to be used client as well it's a client component okay we're going to create a boilerplate like this uh, we're going to create an interface interface let's name it props okay so it's going to be children in here it's going to be the react node so it's going to be our app which is going to be the children so here children and this is to be a fragment so make sure you destructure here children from props okay so we we're going to wrap our entire application with the global provider so if we go to the layout here we need to wrap this with the global style provider like that and then take this and wrap the children as well okay so whatever styles we put in the global are going to be reflected in the entire application so here i'm going to say const global you can name it global styles oops styles equal to styled and then dot div like that oops style dot div uh shift for some reason my escape button is not working okay i'm using a gaming keyboard so it doesn't have these terminal literals so i have to hold shift alt and escape to do this so it wasn't working okay so you take this and put it here okay so make sure you import styled from style components like this if you're using style components okay so to see if this is working we can do background and then let's set it to red so as you can see now the background is set to red 
that means it's working so uh in here what i'm going to do uh, i'm just going to give it a padding 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 top and bottom i'm just going to set that to 2.5 ram and then i'm going to do display flex display flex and then gap i'm going to set the, the gap to 2.5 ram as well and then i'm going to set the height to 100 percent let's save okay so there it is so now we just need to go back to the sidebar here we're going to do const sidebar sidebar styled we're going to style this sidebar we go to styled so for the sidebar uh this should be well i think this uh a nav okay we can do style dot nav style dot nav like that oops okay style dot nav so make sure you import style from style components like that oops import styled from style components uh, copy this and replace this wrapping div okay so uh, what we're going to do now we need some variables for our colors so just in case we want to change this to light dark mode whatever color you want to change so what i'm going to do i'm going to introduce some variables okay so what i'm going to do for, uh, for that i'm going to uh, provide you with a file which has variables so some of these variables we're not using them so these are the variables i'm using for codedealer.com so this is my website i'm using so these variables here so i was a bit lazy to kind of so here we have light and dark mode okay so so these variables you're going to see here are the variables that i used here okay so now i am this website is still under development by the way so it might be a bit slow to your taste so we have lessons we have resources and stuff all right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take those variables which i used in that project i'm going to create a new folder not in not inside components but inside app i'm just going to name this context context i'm just going to put a copy a file here called themes so these are just variables for the colors we're not going to be using a lot of these variables okay so we're just going to be using a few okay so the ones we're not using you can remove them later on okay so here is just uh, an object so we have a default this should be like a dark mode that's the default and then we have a light mode you can add as many themes as you want so this this is just an array of objects that has color variables in there okay so we have name color whatever okay so now uh what we're going to do we're going to be creating a, a, a global context provider i'm just gonna say global i'm just gonna you can name it global context provider or just global provider that's entirely up to you okay provider.js okay so now in here it's going to be a client component also going to be a client so in the global uh, we're going to create um context for the updating and the actual context okay so here we have importing the create context and you state okay uh, we also need to use context so we're going to be creating export const global to be global context this goes to create context and then export const global global update context just in case we want to update this context and then we're going to do export const global provider uh the children we're going to wrap it's going to be our entire application so we're going to wrap with the global provider and then here we're just going to uh, return okay 
I'm just gonna get rid of this crop of state. Uh, okay, so we have the update. Okay, so we have the context provider. Uh, the value here is not going to be the global state. We're going to pass some val uh, values here later on. So the first one we need is theme, which is going to be the variables of our colors. So that's the theme. That's why I'm using theme. But we haven't created the theme state yet. So we need to create a state for the theme. Okay, so I'm going to say const. It's going to be selected theme. So the selected theme by default, it's going to be zero, one, was arrays as zero um zero index based so if you remember our colors is an array of objects so zero is the first object and the, the variables within there so that's the first theme zero if you have another theme it's going to be one the second one is going to be one and so on okay so um so we have the selected theme set to zero and then i'm going to do const theme equal to themes we need to import themes and then select a theme. So by default, the theme is going to be the first. So the themes, this is an, uh, an array. Themes, it's an array. And then the selection is going to be zero. That's the, the index here in the state. And then we are putting that to the state, which is selected theme, which is zero. If we shift that to one, if we update the state, it's going to be one. It's going to be the next theme. Okay. So we are setting that value here so for us to be able to use these values uh, we need to go to the uh, providers providers uh, we need to create another one called context provider because the page the layout this is a server component provider so we cannot use the client Client, well, we're going to use uh, the client like um, state, like use effect or use use state in here. The component must have a uh, use client at the top for us to be able to use that. Okay, so TSX context provider dot TSX use client react functional component and export. We're going to do interface props. Oops, interface props. So here we're going to do children. It's going to be a React node, and then here it's going to be the children. So we need to do global provider. Global prov provider, and make sure you import global provider. And then wrap the children like that. Get rid of the div. Okay, so okay, like that. So now we should be able to have access to the state, but we haven't wrapped our entire application yet with this context provider. So go to the layout, and we need to wrap this. With the context provider okay so uh, i'm going to do context provider like that and then wrap perfect so how do we know if it's working well if you remember in the global provider we're sending theme as a value so we need to get this value the theme okay so let's see what the theme this theme is so here, when we hover over, it shows you what it has. So let's go to the sidebar. So for us to get theme, uh, we need a way for us to get oops, to get this theme. Okay. So for us to get that theme, we need to create two more functions. Okay. To not, well, we need one function to get the theme, but we need one function to update and one to get whatever values here we are sending okay and for the update updating as well so for us we need to export for us to be able to use the context export const we're going to be use global state okay and then it's going to return a um, use context 
Okay, so it's a function returning use context, and then we're going to be using the global context. Okay, so now we're good to use the the values we're sending here, but just in case we want to update, we need to do the same thing for the global update, and then we're going to be using the global update context. Okay, so for us to be able to access these values, we need to get them from use global state. Okay, so what we need to do, go back to the sidebar, we can say const, let's destructure, we need to get the theme. Okay, equal to use global global uh, use global state I hate this auto completion issue it should okay global state it should be coming from uh, let's do it app and then slash context global provider okay so now let's cog this uh, what issue do we have here theme okay so let's go back the theme we're sending theme here global state let's go back to the sidebar and uh, let's click this okay this is rather weird um dun -dun 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 -dun. okay I'm just trying to see why uh, the theme is not working. Undefined. Okay, let's uh, try this. Uh, go back to sidebar. Let's do context. Context. Let's see what we have. Context. Okay, so it's undefined. So we must have done something wrong. So let's go to the provider. Okay, so yeah, this is oops. Context provider. It should it should be global provider. Provider like that. The one coming from the context. Not global. I did notice uh, I was using global style provider. Okay, so this should be global provider, like that. So if we go back to the sidebar, if I save, uh, say global state. Okay, go back. So here, I'm just going to set it as an empty object for now. Okay, so now. If I go back to the sidebar, as you can see now, we have an object which is the a property of theme at the moment. But we are going to destructure this. We are only want to get the theme, and then let's see this in the console. As you can see now, we have those variables for the colors. Okay. Uh, by the way, I'm using a. Uh, I'm using it. I'm using um, an extension called Console Ninja, so I don't need to go to the browser to check the console. I can check. I can see it from here without going in the browser. Okay, so now let's uh, begin the styling. So for us to be able to access this, uh, the theme styles, not the styles. I mean the variables in the styles. So we're going to pass this as a prop in here. We're going to name it theme, and then we pass the theme. We're going to be able to access it here. So uh, what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by giving it a width, okay, a width and a height. So for the width, for the width, I am going to do props, okay. So I'm the props that we have. So we have um, props. Uh, we, oops, we're going to do props dot theme dot sidebar width. 
Okay, so this is the we have a variable called cyber width. Okay, uh, let's check it out. Let's in inspect the cyber to see if it has the width. Okay, as you can see now, it has the width. Nice, that's pretty good. So, uh, cyber width. Uh, what we're going to do now, I'm going to give it a position of relative position relative and i am going to give it a background color background it's going to be prop props the theme uh so the color i'm going to give it it's going to be color bg2 color bg2 okay so props and then the prop we want is called theme and then the variable is color bg2 and then i'm going to give it a border so the border is going to be two p two pixels solid and then the color is going to be border color border color uh color number two i believe border color two that's the variable name and then i'm going to give it a border radius of one ram like that so there it is okay so um seems like inspect inspect okay so we want to display flex these items so the nav and the main okay we want to display flex that so now uh the, we need to go back to the global stars provider so that's where we need to do uh the display flex okay actually we have a display flex here global stars uh let me see why it, it will not be working inspect Hmm. Global Star Provider. Uh, let's go back to the layout. Okay, so it's I don't know why it's not working. Okay. Uh, open this. Global stars. I have no idea why it's it's, it's not working, but it, it should uh, have a flex. Let me inspect this. So okay, so like this, it should yeah, it should have a flex, which is weird. I don't know why it's not working. Okay, let's leave it for now. Mm. Okay, actually, let's try to restart this project and see why it's not working as intended. Okay, so let's refresh. Okay, I think I might know why this is an issue. So let's go to the context provider. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a use effect okay so i'm going to go here i'm going to create a state i'm going to say is ready set is ready so here i am going to do react to use effect so i'm only going to display when the page okay so when the page is is uh you know fully loaded so I'm going to set a set timeout. Set timeout uh, after 200 milliseconds. After 200 milliseconds, and then I'm going to set is ready to true. Okay. Um, if is not ready, I'm just going to return no. And then I'm gonna save. 
Okay, nice. So now, there it is. For some reason, there's a weird uh, thing going on with the board. I don't know why. Now let me inspect. So now, oh, it's border right. It should be border. So if we go to the sidebar, it should be just border, not border right. Okay. So now we have the border for the sidebar. Um, let's just focus on the sidebar content. Uh, I think I'll close everything for now. If we need it, we can open it later. Okay, so for the sidebar, I am going to start with, let's start with the profile. Let's do profile. So we have profile and then we have profile overlay. Overlay. I'm going to explain what this does later. And then we have an image. So make sure you import image from next image. And then the width. I'm going to set that to 70. And then height, I will also set it to 70. Okay, so for the source, I am going to just put an image in the public folder. It's called avatar one. You can put whatever image you want. So this is temporary. Uh, when we connect with our Clack authentication, we're going to be using that image. So here I am just going to do avatar, avatar, one dot png i think it should show now it should okay there it is uh because this public folder has already been saved so we don't need to import it like that we can just do it like this we don't need to include the public folder okay so we have the image uh, let's make sure this image is in a container. Image. All right. So after that, we are going to have an H1. And then we're going to name this. Um, uh, oops. Let's do a span, actually, a span. Where's the calculator? Okay. I'm just gonna put a fake name. So we have the name and the image. Okay. After that, uh, we are going to do some nav items. We're going to do ul nav items. Feel free to use uh, Tailwind CSS, by the way. Feel free. Um, I'm also going to create a new folder. I'm just going to name it utils inside the app. Utils. Um, I'm just going to add a file in here in the utils. It's called menu. So here it's just uh, the menu. So we have the ID, title, icon, and link. So uh, we the first item here is an array of objects. The first item is going to be the home page. The second one is going to be the important. The third one is going to be the completed and then the fourth one is going to be do it now so the icon we need to import these icons so it's importing from icons so what i'm going to do is i'm going to paste another file here it's icons so some of these icons we're not going to be using them so we i'm going to do this later on i'm just pasting the icons in here they're coming from font awesome what we need to do is get the font awesome cdn CDN. Uh, what you can do 
point of some CDN. Where's the CDN? Okay, so copy this. Copy the link tag. So uh, what you can do is you can use React icons or you can use Font Awesome. It's up to you. So go back to the layout. Here, we're just going to do head. And then I've just pasted in the link of the CDN. Okay, so change this to like this. And then save. So hopefully we should have some icons. Oh, oops, we're not looping the menu yet. So what we need to do is loop this, map this. Okay, so we go to the sidebar. We that's where we're going to do the magic of mapping through. So here we need to do menu. We need to import that. So we need to import menu at slash app and then utils and then menu like that so i think this is a default export okay so like that so now we just need to map through this dot map item okay so now we need to return let's just return a div but we're not returning a div we're going to return an li okay so here we're going to return an li you can give it a class name of nav item if you want and then in here we're going to do item dot icon and then we're going to in import a link from next link and then it's going to be item dot link not path we're going to go to the link and then here it's going to be icon item dot title i believe like that so there it is nice pretty good so um what we need to do is when i click uh this li i want to push to the link okay i'm going to say const handle and a click and a click okay so here i'm going to do router dot push i'm going to say link i'm going to push to the link I'm gonna say link in here. It's gonna be a string. It's gonna be router. So we need to import router const router equal to use router from next navigation and then save. Then the click. Okay, copy this function. Uh here on the li. We'll do on click. Oops. Let's do a class name first, actually. So for the class name, I'm going to give it a nav item. So let's do a template literal. Oops. Uh, template literal, and then let's do nav item. Okay. After that, we are going to do on click. On click. Let's do a callback function. And then here item dot link so when you click it's gonna route the item dot link perfect so i'm going to also uh, get the path name okay so the path name so when i click completed it's gonna go to completed so i want to get the path name okay so to get the path name i'm gonna say const path name equal to use path name the path name hook coming from next navigation okay like that so um i want to make sure to give this green active here so the, pa the path name that's active is going to have this green green color here on the side okay so when i click this it's going to be the active one 
when I click this, it will be the active one and so forth. Okay. So, uh, path name. Yeah, I'm going to do like this. I'm going to say path name if path name equal to path name equal to link. Okay, so instead of doing item dot link, I'm just gonna do this const uh, link equal to item dot link. Okay, like that. Instead of so I can just do link here. So if it's equal to link, the path name equal to link, I'm gonna set that to active, otherwise not an empty string. Okay, so if it's like this to this link, it's gonna be active. If I'm on this link, it's gonna be active. Okay, and the other one is gonna be an empty string. Perfect. So instead of item dot link here, I'm just gonna do link. Link. Let's make it shorter. All right, so I don't think. Okay, so uh, we just need to add the sign out button. It's not functional, but actually, we're going to edit later. We need to create a button component, which we don't have yet. So now let's style this. Let's go down to the styles. Let's start with the items. So uh, this I'm gonna put up here. I'm gonna do display flex. Uh, let's do flex direction to column. Just five content space between, like that. All right. So I'm just going to say button. Uh, I'm just gonna put an empty button there. Okay. So it's not just to put a placeholder. All right, so I'm going to give it a color. Put the color here. I'm going to do color. I'm going to do color gray three, gray number three. And then I'm going to target the profile. So for the profile, I'm going to say margin, top and bottom. I'm, uh, actually, not top and bottom, everywhere, 1.5 RAM. And then I am going to do position relative. And then I'm going to do a padding. One rem top and bottom, and then zero point eight left and right, and then I'm going to do border radius. I'm gonna do one rem border radius, and then I am going to do cursor. I'm gonna set that to pointer, and then font weight. I'm gonna set that to five hundred, and then I'm gonna give it a color. So for the color. I'm going to give it a color gray zero, or you can give it a color white. Okay, I think gray zero does the job fine. Okay, I am going to do display flex and then align items, align items to center. All right, so now I'm going to save this. All right, so let me inspect. So we have the profile overlay. Uh, use a button. Okay, so now we need to do the profile overlay. Okay. So I uh, after the here, I'm gonna do dot profile overlay. Overlay. I'm going to do position absolute. Position absolute. I'm gonna do top zero, left zero, and then width one hundred percent, height one hundred percent. I'm going to do a backdrop filter. I'm going to do blur. I'm going to give it a, a blur. Mm. Oops. Blair, I'm gonna set that to 10 pixels and then I'm going to give it a Z index and a background and a transition and a border radius. 
like that and then finally I'll give it an opacity of 0 0.2 and a border of 2 pixels so there is this so it's not that bright but it's there that's it's like the overlay okay so when we hover it's going to be more bright okay nice so after that i am going to target the h1 within within the profile i'm going to give it a font size of 1.2 ram like that uh i think i'll do display flex flex direction column like that okay i think i think that does it uh reduce I think the line height is way way too much let me check here actually we're using different fonts so i'm going to change the font i will leave it as is actually line height i'm going to do 0 0.04 uh, 0 0.7 uh, let's do 2 one zero point nine i don't know just find what you like i'm gonna say three ram i don't know Ah. Okay, I'll leave it like that. Uh, okay, so I am going to target the image and then I'm going to target the H1. I'm going to set position relative and give them Z index of 1. Okay, so for the image, I'm going to target the image again. I'm going to say flex shrink. I'm going to do zero. I'm going to set display inline block overflow to hidden. And I'm going to give it a transition of 0 0.5 seconds is like that. Nice. All right, so I'm still going to give it width and height of 100% of um, 70 pixels and the actual image width width and height is already been set okay so nice it's looking pretty good so we just need to work on the hover have effect okay so so let me collapse this profile overlay collapse. So we have the image. Okay, so I'm just collapsing this so I can see where I'm going with the styles. Okay, so what I'm going to do after the image, I'm going to collapse. I'm going to target the direct H1. Uh, within the uh, we are, are we still in the profile? Yep. So I am going to clamp the font size. Okay. So I'm just going to clamp the font size. So depending on the screen size, it's going to be smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so I'm going to give it a margin left as well of 1 rem and line height of 100% like that. Okay, I think I'll reduce this to 0 0.8. 0 0.8, but in the original I'm using, I'm using 1 rem, so it's up to you like that. So that's good. So now we need to do on hover when we hover this profile. 
PHP and Hava. So when we have the profile, uh, what time is it? When we have the profile, I want the profile overlay, profile overlay. I am going to give it opacity of one, opacity one, and then the border. I'm gonna set it to border two pix two pixels, and then a color of border color two, like that. So when we have her, as you can see now, it's nice. And the image. Remember, we are we have set the parent of the image, the overflow to hidden. So the scale, I'm going to do 1.1 when you hover, as you can see. So the overflow of the parent of the image is set to hidden. So the image is not going to overflow the container. Okay. Nice, nice uh, effect. So now, now we have that. So we just need to style the items here. So I'm going to be collapsing the profile for now. And then we have nav items nav items okay so for the nav items um i'm going to give it a padding padding uh i'm just going to set it to zero 2.6 RAM and 1 RAM top and bottom 0.6 and then actually this should be nav item the li the list item like this all right uh, I'm going to set the padding left to 2.1 2.1 RAM like that Okay, so you, you can set this in one line if you want. So top, like this, right, like this, bottom, like this, and then left 2.1, like that. We saved the line. Okay, so I'm going to do a margin. Margin. Uh, I'm going to do 0 0.3 RAM and 0. I'm going to do display grid. Display grid. Okay, so the grid is going to be the icon and the text. Okay, so grid template columns. So the icon, I want it to occupy space of 40 pixels and then one FR for the text. Like that. Okay, so what we also need to do is we're going to set the cursor to pointer. Cursor, pointer. Uh, we also need to set the position to relative. All right, position is set to relative. So um, what we need to do now is do an after. An after. Oops, after. So when it's active, actually the after I think is this when we have a, you know, it comes like this. That's the after. I think this is the before pseudo element, the green thingy. Okay, so now um, I'm going to set position absolute. I'm going to, oops, position absolute. I'm going to set the content. Width zero, top left zero, uh, height one hundred percent, and z index one, and then I'll give it a bit of a transition. Okay, like that. So the width is zero. When we hover, the width is going to be one hundred percent. Okay, it's going to transition to one hundred percent. Okay, so that's that. So uh, we need to do the before pseudo element as well okay so some of the styles are quite as similar here but uh let's i'm just gonna give it a different color so it's gonna be color green dark so this one green dark so it should be 
Okay, so that's the before. I'm going to give it a border top radius, top left radius, and and border top um and border bottom left radius five pixels, like that. So when we have her, that's where the that's when the magic is going to happen. Okay, so um I think I'm just going to target the anchor tag. I'm just going to set the font weight to five hundred. Uh, okay, so when we have uh, this item, when we have her, uh, I am going to set the width of the after to 100%. Okay, as you can see now, it's uh, looking pretty good. It doesn't look, it doesn't appear to be nicely centered. Uh, we're going to fix this. Okay, so after the hover, I uh, I think before they have a uh, here instead of keep net I'm not I'm not going to keep nesting here so after the anchor tag I'm just gonna target the I tag I'm going to display flex and center and give it a different color like that all right perfect so um now what we need to do again is our anchor tag here. I think I'll just I'll give it a transition and a Z index. Okay, like that. So um after this, I am going to target the active nav item. I just target the active. So we have active. So for the active, I am going to set the background color to active nav link like that. So that's the active. And then I'm going to target the eye tag so the color I'm going to say that to color icons to like that okay so it looks looking pretty good all right so we haven't created the pages yet so and then the a tag like so I'll just do like this and a tag Okay, so icons too, like that. Perfect. So uh, the other thing that's left is the before pseudo element. So I am going to do dot active dot active before like that, and then the width is going to be zero point three zero point three RAM. Like that, so there it is. Okay, so we have that. I think I'll just target the button. I'm just gonna give it a margin. I'm gonna say 1.5 RAM. All right. So for some reason, I feel like uh, it's not nicely centered. Is it? Let me inspect this. It's not like nicely centered as I'd like it to. Okay. Okay. Align items. Center. It's not aligned. Okay, it also depends with the font you're using. So line height. OK, 
surface line height to li padding top 0 0.6 the bottom should be 0 0.6 as well 0 0.6 Okay, so yeah, uh, let's get rid of uh, line height in here. Let's set that to zero. All right. I mean, uh, <coughs> Let me inspect again. Line height. Oops, not the active, but the anchor tag. Nav item A. Line height. Zero. Align items center um, align item to center, so the item should be centered, but we need to fix so top zero point six and let's do zero point seven and bottom zero point seven as well like that so it should look pretty good okay you can increase this padding actually so bottom let's let me make it a bit bigger eight so this one should be nine nine like that so you can kind of i use your eyes to kind of see the balance all right so the reason why it's different was there's a button here so if there's more space here for the button it's going to look uh, identical okay so that's pretty much it for the sidebar now we just need to uh, build these pages that we want so we're going to have important important So it's going to be a page to a TSX. Okay, use client React functional component and export. So this should be important. I'm going to copy this. So we've important. Uh, we need another page called completed. So in next 13, this is how we do pages. As long as you put a folder in the app directory and have a page.tsx or page.js inside, it will be recognized as a page. And the name of the folder will be the actual route of that page. So we have the completed, so this will be the route completed. Okay? And then if as long as you have page.tsx in here, we are good to go. And then this should be completed. Completed and then we have let me check what route is this. Oh, I've disabled the routing, so it should be incomplete. Incomplete, incomplete, like that. And then we should have a page to a TSX and then paste it and then we're going to have incomplete like that so when we go back we should be able to route to these pages nice 
okay so the active you can put the color to white if you don't like this color the current one or you can put it to green it's up to you what you decide to use all right so let's start with um, the content we're not going to do the content we're just going to do this uh, background here for that let's go to the layout so in the layout uh, first of all, I'm just gonna close everything. Layout. Okay, so in the layout, what we need to do, um, I'm going to set this width to 100%. All right. Uh, I'm gonna put a div here. So the width, I'm just gonna say width. I'm gonna do class. I'm gonna say width full. So this is a utility coming from TO and CSS. So it basically means width 100%. So the width is 100% right now, like this. Width full. Okay. So uh, we need to kind of uh, give it a background. So here we're going to target so the main that's where the background is okay well i'll just copy this color here let me check again Okay, so the overflow auto. Okay, so for this one, uh, we need to create a component which is called tasks. Okay, so the tasks. Are going to have this background here okay so on each page we're going to render the tasks so we are going to go to components and we're going to create tasks tasks and then in there we're going to create tasks to tsx and then react functional component export and then in the one page we're going to render the tasks okay like that so the tasks tasks it's going to be dynamic later on so here we have the tasks uh we are going to say const oops not in here but in the tasks const tasks styled equal to styled Uh, make sure you import style components and make sure this is a client component use client i'm going to copy the task styled and i'm going to replace here and then i'm going to save all right so now we should have tasks here what we need to do is style this so to style this i'm going to give it a width of 100 percent uh, we need to get the theme which is our variables theme from equal to use global state is it global state yeah and then let's pass this as a prop so we can have access to it down here and uh, i'm going to set the background background color to props and then it's going to be color bg2 and then i'm going to set a border two pixels border color number two and then I'm going to give it a border radius, one rem, and then a padding, a padding of padding of two rem. And then I'm going to set overflow y, overflow y to auto. You're going to see why we're setting to automatic, auto. And then I'm going to get rid of the scroll bar. So I'm going to set it to 0.5 RAM 
the width. Okay, so now there is our tasks. 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 <laughs> okay. So now let me see. Height. You can set that to. Let me set this. Width full. Wait a minute, wait, do I need to set the height? Oh, this should be here, right? Anyways. Mm. Uh, task, 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 task. Okay, so by the way, the height should, it should just be full already. I don't know why. Uh, inspect. Ah, I think I know why. So if we go to page, we just need to return the tasks like that. So the tasks, we can wrap it instead of a div. We can make it a main. Like that. All right. So now we have the tax tasks. Um, what we need now. I'm just thinking what's next. Okay. So now, yeah, what we need to do is do. We can do authentication. Authentication. So to do authentication, uh, we need to use Clerk. So I'm going to open a new terminal here. So let's install Clerk. So let's see what Clerk is. Clerk. So Clerk, uh, it's a way for us to do authentication. So to install Clerk, we need to copy this. That's the first step. And then we install Clerk. So the next step, is setting environment environment variables okay so we need to create env dot local in the root here dot e env dot local like that for some reason sometimes it gives me an error while I'm trying to install something I don't know I think it's a internet problem now it's working Okay, so now we have Clerk. Uh, we have to create um, environment local. And then the next step would be to create a provider. It should be called Clerk provider or auth provider. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to say auth provider. Provider.tsx. Okay, um, so the next step is importing Clerk like this. And uh, we need to wrap up with the Clerk provider, which is going to have like a Clerk auth. Okay, so uh, let's start with Actually, to make it easier, we don't need to uh, create a, a separate file for this. We can just do use this di directly. Uh, get rid of oops. Get rid of this. Let's go to the layout like that, and then we just need to wrap. Our entire application with the Clerk provider. Okay, so even the HTML should be wrapped. All right, I'm gonna copy this. 
and I'm also going to delete this terminal like that. So we've wrapped with Clack Provider. Okay, so now it's working. Uh, let me see. I don't know what's the issue. Uh, if there's an issue, I think we might also want to restart this project because we did not restart it. npm run dev. All right. And also, I think the next step would be actually we need to create a middleware. So we need here to create a file here called middleware dot ts like that so that's the next step and then let's just copy this this is for pro uh, rod protection uh, okay so let's save this save let's go back so now it's not going to work because we don't have a secret key in the in in local so let's go to Docs for Clack and then click dashboard. Make sure you create an account. Uh, I have already an exist some projects already existing. So create a new application, add application. I'm gonna say my tasks like this. Uh, you can click as many providers as you want. I think the limited we have is three providers if you are using a free free tier. In this case, I am going to be using Google and email that's it i'm not going to use anything else so you can show more you can click whatever providers you want to use for signing in i'm going to create the application and then i'm going to copy the pub the public key and the secret so i'm going to change this to don't use this i'm going to press paste to here for for the secret key um let me check the name we should have Okay, so yeah, it's already there. So now we have the secret. So it should it should send us to the login page. Okay, so now when I refresh, we are in the login page. We're not going to be able to access to access the root page of our application. So what we need to do now, yeah, uh, we need uh, so if we go to the middleware, you can see all the routes are protected. So what we can do is we can set a, a public, uh, public middleware, so uh, pu public, no public middleware, public routes, uh, routes. So if you want the homepage to be public, you can set it to be public. Okay, but in this case, I want the homepage not to be public, so this is fine. I'm just going to get rid of these comments. Uh, get rid of the comments. So the home page is protected. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a sign out page and a sign in. So I want this to be in a sign in page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create those pages. So I am going to create a sign in, sign in page, page.tsx. Oops, React functional component and export use client. This should be sign in, sign in page. Oops, I'm going to copy this. I am going to create a new page. It should be sign up, sign up. I am going to say page to a TSX and then I'm going to say sign up page. Okay, so the sign in. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to ENV local. ENV local, you, you can put random stuff here. It's fine. Uh, ENV local, I'm going to say next next public public uh, i'm gonna do click and then sign in 
sign in URL. So the sign in URL for this one is going to be well, what did you name it? It's going to be sign in. Okay, so it's going to be slash sign in. Sign in like this. That's going to be the sign in URL. So instead, it's not it's, it's not going to be using this random page. It's going to have our own URL, sign in URL, and then as uh, next public clerk sign in URL, and then we have sign out, sign up. So this should this shouldn't be sign out. It should be sign up, sign up. So this should be sign up. Uh, is this sign up? Yep, yeah, sign up. And then we have after sign up, after sign in, uh, let's go to the home page, or you can just do slash like this. And then we can do after sign out, we can do to, we can after sign out, um, oh, after sign in and after sign up. We can go to URL like that. Okay. And then redirect public. No, no, no. I don't think we have a sign out, do we? After sign out, I think we have a sign out. So we're going to do login or sign in, sign in, sign in like that. Okay. So let's save this. So uh, I'm going to go to localhost 3000. So it should be sign in. <sighs> okay, sign in page. Sign in. Why is it showing the, okay. Sign in page, but it's not showing the form. Uh, I don't know why it's not showing the form here. The sign in. Sign in. So uh, I'm going go, gonna go to layout. I don't want to show this sidebar. Uh, do not want to show this sidebar. Okay, so I'm going to do a condition. <clears throat> I only want to show this sidebar when there's a user signed in. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I am going to get the user ID from out. So this is a server component. So we're able, we're able to do this like const user ID equal to out out from uh, clerk okay so we need to import out from clerk okay so like this out like that so user id so if we have user id that's when we want to show the sidebar, okay? So the sidebar is not there. For some reason, uh, I did not see the form. Okay. Let's go to the local. Let's just check if the names are correct. Sign in URL. Uh, make sure these URLs are correct. This name, uh, the var environment, uh, environment, environment variables are correct. So I'm just double checking to see if they are correct. URL. Okay, let's save this. Let's refresh. Okay. Sign in page. It's weird. I don't know why it's not showing. So for the secret, uh, get rid of this, and then just put something random here, like that. So 
now let's try to refresh this, restart the project. Since we've updated the ENV local. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the local host. 3000. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Okay. So, okay. I think, I think I know why. Uh, let's go back to the page. So we have the sign in. We need to import the component. I forgot to do that. So here we need to do sign in sign in from clerk like this import the component the sign in component and save so we should have a sign in component here there it is okay uh we are going to be styling this later so leave this div for now because we're going to be using this for styling so we have the sign in uh when i do sign up we don't have this component we need this component as well so if we go sign up, oops, we need sign, sign up like that, <coughs> save. So we can switch between sign in and sign up, sign in and sign up. Okay, so now we need to sign up, go sign up. Continue with Google. And then I'm going to use my email. So if you have any questions, you can email me. For some reason, my connection is really slow today. So that's why it's taking forever to do anything that requires internet. Uh, let me refresh, it's so slow. Okay, so I just realized I had copied the wrong key so it was set to the core dealer so just change it to whatever application you're using in this case if you have only one application you don't need to change anything uh, it should be probably be working by now so in this case i'm just going to change it to the correct application and then i'm just going to copy the correct key so as you can see the key is changing okay so i'll copy the correct one and then i'll just replace here and then just go to the sign up page i've already signed up uh, with my Google account, I'm just going to refresh this. I uh, should be able to work in a minute. Okay, so I've already going to sign up and sign up with my Google account. So you should be able to log in to sign up. Don't go to sign in, go to sign up to create an account first. And then you're going to be able to log in like this. Okay, after that, you're going to be able to log in after you created your account. So now here's the main page, home page. So we need to start by creating. Uh, we need to be able to create these tasks. Okay, so to do that, we are going to start with install. I'm just going to stop the project. Uh, we're going to install a few things. So we're going to run npm i at prisma slash client. I'm, I, I can't, I'm pretty sure we've installed this in the beginning. I can't remember, but it's fine. We can reinstall it. And then we're going to also install. Um, I think Prisma, only pri uh, Prisma with the client, okay, like that. Uh, let's do it latest, like that, and then let's hit install. So hopefully it should take only a few seconds. Okay, that's 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 it. So if we go to the Prisma, Prisma init. So we need to initial initialize. Uh, our data source, which our database, so we're going to be using Prisma and MongoDB. So the data is going to, be, to go to MongoDB. So we need to run Prisma in it. Uh, okay, we need the one that includes a data source. Okay, so copy this. 
there should be init uh, it's not here init is taking ages to load data source anyways like this so you copy this prisma init initialize we're going to initialize the data source we're going to set that to mongodb not sql and then just write mongodb mongo db and it's going to generate it's going to generate a dot env file as well as a prisma folder so in the env there's going to be the database url don't change the url name what we're going to do is just going to mongodb mongodb so when you go to mongodb uh, uh this is the wrong site mongodb okay it's taking ages to load okay so go to sign in sign in sign in uh, with your account and then go to database click connect copy the node URL copy that if you copy just paste it here and then put your password okay put your actual password and then after here you put your database name instead of my DB just put the name my tasks like this my tasks and then uh, just put your URL here and then it should work but now uh, what I'm going to do I'm just going to put my own URL off of the screen because it's my personal URL I, I wouldn't want to change the password again after this so um, I just pasted mine okay so I've pasted mine all right now so we have the env file with the database URL so after we've initi uh, initialized uh, the data source to mongodb uh, the next source uh, the next step is to generate but only after we create a model so here we're going to create a model uh, let's name it uh, what should we name our model let's name it task task you can name it tasks whatever you want let's name it task okay or post so uh, I think I'll just name it task and then we are going to have an ID it's going to be string string and then we're going to map this like that and then we have the title description and then we have date the date is also going to be a string okay okay so we have uh, ID title date description and then we're going to have is completed it's going to be a boolean false by default and then we're going to have is important so it's going to be also a boolean and default is going to be false as well okay and then we're going to have created it dead time and then updated it and then we're going to have the user id which is going to be the id of the currently signed in user okay uh it's going to be a string as well all right so that's it for this one we just need to run npx npx uh, prisma and then we're going to do generate like that okay nice so now let's go to mpx prisma for studio let's see what we have i'm going to close this okay so we have the task task model as you can see now we have all of the fields we don't have anything yet 
Okay, so we need to start by creating an API folder. Uh, let's name it a, it should be in the app. It should be API. And then we are going to have task or tasks. We're going to create a route.ts in there. All right, so we're going to have a few functions in here. So we're going to export, uh, export async. So the function we're going to have in here is going to be post. Let's start by post first. And then we're going to do request. It's a request object. Not just request, but request like that. And then we're going to have a try catch. And then here we're going to have CLG. We're just going to say error creating task like that. And then we're going to return new next response like that. Uh, I don't know why I have, let me check to see why. Okay. So we should have an error in here. Oops. Error. So for the error, I'm just going to say error creating task. All right, and then I'm going to have a status. Okay. Next response. All right, so now uh, we're going to see uh, why we're getting the error. It should be next response dot JSON actually. Next response dot JSON. So let's save it. All right. So instead, uh, error creating task. Yep. Now. Uh, we need to duplicate this. So we are going to get error getting tasks. Getting tasks. Uh, after get, we need to put, we can make some updates. Error updating, updating task task and then we're finally going to have a delete error deleting deleting task All right, so now creating, updating. Okay, so now we have the methods that we, we want. So we have the post, get, put, delete. Okay, so let's start by creating some tasks. Okay, so uh, the only way we can create is if we're logged in. So I'm going to destructure. We're going to get the user ID. User ID from out. That is coming from Clerk. Like that. That's how we get the user ID. So if we don't have the user ID, if not user ID, it's going to be unauthorized. Okay, so we're just going to return. We're going to return. A next response response so it should be dot json like that it should be unauthorized okay 
if so we're going to get uh, the title we're going to title description date okay so we have the date uh, we've completed completed and we have important important title description date completed important okay and then we're going to do await we're going to do request to json like that okay so uh let's do some validations you can do these validations one by one but i'm just going to do them in a single block so i'm going to do if if no title description or date i'm just going to say missing by the way it's remembering what i'm uh, what i've done in the original project <laughs> so missing required fields okay like that so after that uh we need to do if if title dot length is less than three length is less than three uh we're going to do title must be at least three characters long okay and then finally we are going to create the task we're going to say task equal to await so for us to be able to create we are going to be using uh, prisma for us to put the date the date in the database okay so what we need to do is we need to create a folder in the app let's name it utils oh i've already created the folder okay so let's go to utils we're going to create a new file it should be connect so this is what we're going to be using to connect to the database okay do ts like that so we're going to import prisma client so i'll show you the documentation import prisma client so here is how we do it so to set a new client so we're going to import prisma client and then we're going to say let prisma and then we're going to say that to prisma client okay so uh, now what we need to do is we're going to check if if process dot env dot node env equal to production we're going to say prisma new client like this so we're going to initialize a new new client else else we're going to say if not global to prisma and then we're going to also initialize a new client else we're going to set uh, the global to the prisma i'm going to set the prisma to the global okay now uh we have an issue uh, let's see if it's not working we're going to fix it later by the way we're going to export default prisma uh let's ignore this the type checking here uh, we can ignore here no so we shouldn't have warnings anymore so now we are going to import in the in the in the root we're going to import prisma so const task equal to await prisma it's remembering what i was doing in the original project await prisma so we need to import the prisma from utils dot task dot create so make sure it's auto completing here when i do uh, prisma when i import a prisma when i do dot it should show task okay or whatever name you you give into your model okay so make sure you're importing here from import prisma from utils if you export it as default 
you should import it like this or as a module you can import like this okay uh let's go ahead and create a new task okay so to create a new task we have everything that we need uh here we just have to do data so the data we're going to put in the title the description i'll get rid of the user okay uh i'll save so it should be uh completed important so what did we name those properties oh the code is is completed we should say that to completed and then we have is important we said that to important and then finally we have the user id where we don't need to do like this user id because they have the same name so we can just leave it like this like user id so the user id is coming from whatever current currently logged in user from the clerk okay so we have that so now we just need to return a next response to json the status doesn't matter here okay uh we can just do like this task like that okay so we have a way a method to create this task uh, the task so now we need to put this to the test so we need to create some components for us to be able to to create this we need to create a front end component so for us i'm just going to uh go back to the app i'm just going to put a form for us to be able to create okay so um just thinking uh, what component did i use okay so i'm just trying to think what component i've used hmm i'm just trying to think okay 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 so i'm just going to create a new component i'm just gonna say model models like that i might be able to create a dynamic model but i've just okay i'll just create it in here create content content create content dot tsx uh, create content yep it should be use client it's a client component use client it's a functional component we're going to export and we're going to go to the page the main page instead of returning only the tasks i am going to return a fragment okay a react fragment and then here i'm going to tasks ta actually no we are going to go inside the tasks in here i am going to say create content like that so i'm going to render the component that we just created so i'm just going to stop the prisma client from running um prisma studio not client so we're going to run npm run dev npm run dev so let's wait for it to load so while we're waiting i was thinking to do the inputs in the global state but i'll just do it here to make it easier for you and quicker than doing in the global state in the context so i'm just going to do const title just to make it easier set title so make sure you import use state from react so we have use state okay um use title and then we need the description we need the date we need the completed const 
completed completed and then we need the important important okay so all right so i'm just doing this state in an easy way in an easy way to understand okay and uh we have that we have the state for all of our inputs okay so now we have the ta the tasks that's still showing i think we need to refresh the page Okay. Uh, oh, it's on three thousand and one because the original project is running on three thousand. Uh, why is it asking me to sign in? Continue with Google. All right, so now I am in the application. So it says create content here. So we need some inputs uh, for us. Okay, so we are going to create some inputs. We are going to be making this as a form, I guess. Let's make it a form. Okay, and we're going to have, I'm not sure if we can put H1 in the form. Uh, create a task. And then we are going to have input control. Input control, it's a div. And then we're going to have a label. Label is going to go to the title. And then it's going to be title. That's the label, and then we're going to have an input, input, and then this input is going to have a bunch of things. So we're going to have a value, the value ID, let's set it to title, and then it's going to have a value, the title, which is the state value, and then type, it's going to be text, and then name, Gonna be title and then on change uh on change i am going to do a handle change handle change i don't have this function yet but the name of the uh the event is, is going to be the title okay so handle change we're going to change the title we haven't set the handle change yet and i'm just going to do a placeholder placeholder uh i'm just going to paste in a generic placeholder in here all right so now we we have that type oh, we don't need to type it's already here okay so now we have the input input control we just need to duplicate this a few more times uh duplicate so we going to have description for the other one. Okay, so I'm just going to paste in. So the description is going to be a text area. So description, it's going to be a text area instead of an input. Okay, and then put the rows to four. I'm just pasting in to speed this up. And then we don't have this handle change function yet. So make sure the name matches the state okay the state and we are also going to have a date so the the value is going to be date on change it's going to be handle change of the date because we set it to a string the type is going to be a date as well and finally uh, we are going to have we're going to have an input control and get rid of this and then completed we're going to set that to a string okay so here it's a boolean completed wasn't so we're going to set that to a string and then we're going to send that as a string okay completed so make sure the name uh it matches here okay so the name 
and the handle change matches and the state matches as well and the id match make sure these three things match okay so this is a checkbox by the way we're going to be triggering true and false okay and finally we have the one for we have the one for so instead of completed so this one should be important important like that okay so the f only thing that's missing is going to be the submit button okay dot submit btn okay we're going to do button type submit this time type submit okay and then we're going to just say submit it doesn't matter if i'm using a span okay so now let's refresh this the uh, handle change is not there we don't have this function yet so let's go ahead and create the handle change function okay so i'm going to do const handle change so the handle change we're going to be it's going to be a little bit a little bit dynamic so name string and then we're going to also take the event i'm i'm just going to do a change event like that or you can do any okay uh this is be a bit messy i'll just do any okay so uh now uh we're going to run a switch okay so the first one is going to be we're going to switch name okay so based on the name we're going to you know dynamically do the input so we're going to do case title we're going to set the title to e dot target dot value and then we're going to break and then case description we're going to set description okay we're going to handle the change for the description we're going to get the it dot target dot value whatever we're typing in the input we're setting that to the description okay and uh we have date same thing for completed all right and same thing for important and default we're just gonna break okay so what we're doing the name the name which is the t the name we set here so the input is a name so the name is going to be this one okay so the name of the input is date so name if the name is date so name is date and also name make sure it matches here okay and then if the name is date we're going to get the input for the date if it's completed we're going to set completed like that so now we should be able to have handle change working but it seems to be not working currently uh, let's refresh uh nothing okay so the handle change doesn't seem to be working at the moment uh let's see why handle change okay so yeah we are using all of our state values all right let me try to let's try to see console okay so for some reason it's not showing in the, oh because the color is white okay <laughs> it's working but uh the color is white okay so yeah it's working don't worry it's just the color is white set to white but it's working 
So what we need to do is a way to submit this. So we have, we have a post method, if you remember. So for us to handle the request, we need to, we're going to be using Axios. So we're going to do npm i Axios. All right, so now we need to do const. We're going to handle submit. Okay, so for the handle submit, we're going to do e dot prevent default like that. Okay. Um, this should be a form. Okay, and on submit, we should handle submit. Okay, so when we submit, we're going to run that function. All right, so now let's save. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to take the state values, all of those values. We're going to do const task, all of the state values. We're going to put them in an object. And then we're going to send them title, description, date, completed, important. Okay, so it's, it's an object. And then we're going to send that object. We're going to do a try, catch. Uh, we're going to say const res equal to await, await axios dot post. Uh, we need to make sure this is an async async okay well it's going to be a api tasks okay uh make sure it should be api slash tasks or whatever name you've named yours tasks okay uh i'm going to say if uh, response dot data dot error if we have an error we are going to do a toast we need to install react hot toast react hot toast uh, this one okay documentation uh, copy this install go to the terminal we install react hot toast so we have toast we're going to do toast oops Toast dot error. So, so make sure you import the toast. Okay. Here, yeah. import toast from React whole toast. Okay. We're, we're not going to be able to see anything yet because we need to kind of wrap our application with the toast provider. Okay. Uh, what we can do, uh, let's go to the documentation. We just need to import toaster like this and we can go to the context we can edit in the context actually context provider uh, we can like this and then we can do a toaster here toaster like that so it should be able to work if you have any errors so uh, let's go to the application create so now we can do an error here toast dot error we can do something went wrong like that and then we have to console the error okay so after this we are going to do uh if actually i will just do a success for now and we're going to do some conditions later okay so now we should be able to create a task let's see if we have any errors at all we are going to find out so i think let's try it I'm just going to put random data, a date. I'm just going to put something random like that. I'm going to submit. Okay. It says task created successfully. I don't know how, I'm not sure about, I'm not so sure about that, but let's console. 
the task if we create if we create something um let's cog task i'm just going to put some random data here submit again okay it seems like we're creating a task and the user id is being added as well so yeah we are we are indeed creating the tasks we are creating the task uh, what we need to do now is fetch and display the task tasks. So fetching the tasks, uh, it's not that it's not that difficult to do. Okay, so we just uh do a get request and then do and then display the task. So we're going to mainly do that in our context, and then we're going to display our tasks. Okay. So I think for now I'll take a break and then I'm going to continue. Okay, so now let's work on retrieving our tasks. So now we can create the tasks. So we need to, to retrieve the tasks. Go to the root and we're going to go to the get get function here. So we're just going to do the standard. We're going to get the user ID. User ID coming from us. And then here we're just going to check if we don't have the user ID. We're going to retrieve the tasks uh, linked to this specific user who signed in. Okay, so we're going to say const tasks equal to tasks uh, await prisma dot tasks task dot find many. So this is the task model. So we need to find many where the user id matches the current currently logged in user okay so we're just going to say where user id okay so we're just going to get the logged in user okay so let's by the way let's run i'm just going to stop this go to the terminal let's run uh, prisma studio to see if we have our data in the prisma studio so I'm going to refresh. Okay, as you can see, our data that we created is there. Okay, so now we just want to retrieve that data. So here we can return uh, these tasks. Okay, so we're going to return next, uh, next response and then the tasks. Okay, so we need to do a get. Uh, on this endpoint here on the tasks endpoint so we're going to do that in the context because we want to access the data anywhere that we want to so i'm going to go to the where's the context 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 here yeah. so let's go to the global i think we can do it in the global okay and um i'm going to create a few functions Let's start with uh, getting all of the tasks. I'm gonna say const all tasks. Tasks is gonna be an async function. Okay, so for all tasks, I'm going to also have a loading state. Here I'm gonna say const is loading, is loading, okay. So here I'm going to do a try catch and then I'm going to set loading to true here and then I'm going to say const uh, result equal to await await axios but we're going to do a get method so make sure you import axios we're going to do a get method so slash api and then tasks so let's make sure axios is imported like this okay and um so the result uh what we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, a state for the tasks okay uh we could have used um we could have used a different way to handle this data okay we could have used a use reducer or something Okay, and then we're going to say const, uh, let's do tasks, tasks. Okay, so it, it's going to be an empty array on init, initial. 
um, here, we're just going to put the data in the array. So first off, let's see what we have. COG response to data. Let's run a use effect here. So react react dot use effect. Uh, use effect like that. And then on initial render, we are going to run the all task function. Okay. So we should be able to see something in the console. Uh, I'm going to inspect. Okay. And there it is. So we have an array. We're getting the items. Or you can, you know, if you're using console ninja, you're going to be able to see this in here. Okay. So we're getting the data. Uh, we're putting that data into this array. Um, so now we just well, we're just going to update the state with the actual data okay and then we're just going to set the loading to false uh let's console this error and then we're going to do toast toast something went wrong like that an error all right so now um actually we don't need this now uh, we are going to send this data in here, not select the theme, but in this case, we want to send the tasks in here. So we're going to have access to the tasks in here since it's in the context. So now let's go to the um, uh, tasks. Okay, here. So we have this create here. I'm just going to get rid of this. We're going to create a model for that. Okay. So here we are going to start with the title. So we're going to create an interface. Interface. Uh, we're going to have a title. Title is going to be a string. And then we're going to have tasks. Tasks. I'm just going to do any for now. Okay. So now uh, we are going to display an H1 here. And then it's going to be the title. It's going to be the title. No time. Title. Because we didn't destructure here. We need to destructure the properties. And then we're going to display the title here. Okay, so now we've displayed the, the title. I'm just going to create a div. I'm going to name this tasks. Tasks and then give it uh, another class called grid as well. Okay, like that. And then we are going to get the tasks. Uh, we're getting the theme here. We need to get the tasks as well. Like that. Uh, why do we have an issue? Oh, wait, is it tasks? So wait, we need to give this a different name. Um, we don't need to get it from here, actually. We're going to pass it somewhere else. Uh, wherever we're rendering this task component. Okay, so here I am going to map the tasks, tasks, and then I'm going to return a task. Okay, so in this case, we're returning a div, but I'm going to create, I'm going to create a new component called task item, task item dot tsx. It's going to be a client component, use client, react functional function. Uh, we are going to go back here instead of returning a task div like this. We're going to return a task task item. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to do task dot id like this. Okay. So also here we can do. I think we can. Do this, and then we'll just 
spreading all of those properties okay we're just going to go to the task item uh, we're going to do an interface okay interface uh task should be let me check well it's an object okay so here we're going to get these properties okay say it does not exist on type task 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 Uh, let me double check task item task I okay I don't know why it says that let me put it to any for now uh, let's see uh, in the task item we're going to show, display this data so we have an h1 which is going to have a title and then p description and then we're going to have a date a date okay so this this date is not going to be formatted uh tasks it's undefined because we did not pass the tasks in here so what we need to do is we're going to do const tasks tasks equal to use global state and then we are going to pass the tasks in here all right uh which is it global state or global context can not remember yes global state so what's the issue Okay, so this should be a client component. Use client. Use client. All right, so the error should disappear now. So now, as you can see, we have the task. But we're going to format this date in a different way, not like this. Okay. So we do have the tasks. Uh, let's go back to the task item. Task item um the date i'm going to give it a class of date class name date so let's see why we have an issue here uh Okay, I'm just gonna leave it at any. I'm I'm quite new to subscript, so I don't know why it's complaining. Okay, so now after the date, we're going to go on the uh, footer. I'm just gonna name this the task footer. Task footer. Uh, I'm going to have a button in here, button, and then it should have a class. Class name of completed, completed, and uh, it should have te text of completed, completed. All right, and what else? So this should be is completed. okay uh, instead of doing this i'll just get the individual properties from here title string description date this should be is completed is completed okay uh we also need to get the id which is going to be a string All right. Uh, okay. 
I'll get rid of this. Okay, so I'm going to do a conditional here. So I'm going to check if it's completed or not completed. Okay, so it's a conditional render of this button here. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to say it's completed. Okay, if it's completed, I'll do this button. Else, it's going to be incomplete. Uh, be incomplete. Incomplete, incomplete, not incompleted. So incomplete. So we have completed and incomplete. Incomplete. Not incomplete, incomplete, like that. Okay, so if it's completed, it will show this. Otherwise, it will show this. Okay. Um. After the after that, we are going to do a few more buttons. So we are going to have. Uh, let's do. Let's do edit. Edit. And then for the edit, we're going to have an icon called edit. Make sure you import this icon from YouTube's icons. Okay. So we have edit. Edit. So this should be a button instead of a div. Button, edit. And then we're going to have a delete. Uh, button, delete. And then we're going to have a delete icon. Delete. I think it's called trash. So we import the trash icon and then we save. So we should have those icons. Okay. Uh, for some reason, the text is not showing. Let's refresh this. I don't know why it's still not showing. So description. Okay. Seems like we have an error somewhere. So here, I'm going to pass those properties. Uh, pass those properties like that. And then I'm going to save. Okay, so now those properties are showing. Great, great. So now it's only a matter of styling. Let's start with, um, let's give it a title, shall we? So for, for the title, I'm just thinking what, what title we should give this. Let's name it All Tasks. Okay, All Tasks. And then let's, let's go ahead and style this. All right, so for the styling, we are going to start with, let's start with the H1. Uh, H1. I'm going to give it a font size. Uh, wait. Oh, I could have sworn we had done the, <laughs> the before pseudo element before, the green thingy. I think I've removed those styles by, by accident. <laughs> But then I'm just going to paste those styles. So here we're just going to uh, copy this. And then we've done, we have done this H1 before, by the way. I've accidentally, remo accidentally removed these styles, I think. And then position set to relative. And then after is this green thing here. I, I think I removed by accident. Okay. and. Uh, Next tasks. So next, what we want, uh, tasks, uh, okay, tasks, we need to do a grid, okay, but after, after these tasks, I am going to do a create task create task okay and then we're going to have a plus 
plus icon make sure you import the icon and then we're going to do add new task add new task like that so this should be a button like that and uh, there it is add new task okay so what we're going to do now let's do the styles uh let's start with so here we're just going to do a create task styles we're going to do the other ones in the global so create task okay so the create task is going to be let me go to localhost 3000 uh, continue with google so the so the add task is going to be this box here okay that's going to be the for creating a new task so to create task i'm just going to give it a display flex and center everything and then i am going to give it a gap gap it should be something like 0 0.5 rem oops 0 0.5 rem and also i'm going to give it a height height i am going to set that to 16 ram okay and the color and font weight and a border radius and also a border of three pixels all right so it should be something like uh, like this okay uh i don't know yeah okay so it's sometimes it's taking a while to retrieve the user so this is the box like this okay so let's uh we've done the styles for that i'm just going to give it a hover effect and hover on hover i'm gonna set to gray five and the color to gray zero like that so let's see when we hover like that but we need to give it a transition uh, let's give it an ease transition 0 0.3 seconds should have like a nice transition all right so there it is we have a nice transition uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to style the grid okay so the grid we're just going to put it in the global provider so global styles style provider I'm going to do dot grid. So here I'm going to say display grid. Okay, so I want the grid to be responsive. I'm going to say grid template columns. I'm going to do repeat and then I'm going to do auto fill. Auto fill. Fill and then min max. The minimum width is going to be 300 pixels. And then it's going to automatically, you know, resize okay and i'm going to give it a gap gap of 1.5 ram like that you can give it whatever gap you want that's entirely up to you all right and uh yeah that's it for the grid uh we need to see what we also need to start go back to the tasks uh we need to style the tasks tasks okay um let's start with uh tasks so let's let me check this one should have it's not loading the tasks okay so the task item is what we need to style okay i need to give it this style here so uh we need to go to the task item and give it you know the styles so task item const task item styled so make sure you import styled components like that and then you are going to replace this I'm going to give it a padding, a background color of color icons number two. Like that. And then uh, we are also going to give it a box shadow. 
a box shadow like that and uh, there it is okay so border set to border color 2 border color 2 seems to be wrong Okay, let me check to see why the border color tool is not working. Uh, for now, let's just do the styles. Height, 16 RAM. And then we're going to display flex and give it a gap. Okay, so there's an, a, a gap here. Okay, so now we need let me check to see why border color 2 I'm just trying to see if I have this in, in my variables border color 2 okay it seems like I do have border color 2 But let me inspect to see why it's not working. Okay, so the background. Okay, because we did not include, we did not include the theme, the theme prop, okay? So we don't have access to the colors. Const. We're going to do theme. I'm going to use global state, and then I'm going to pass it as a prop here. Theme, and let's save. We should be able to see what we have. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we need to do now. I am going to. Let's go to all tasks. Let's give it margin top margin. Uh, let's do two RAM top and bottom, and then zero left and right. Let's increase this to four. Wait, tasks styled, task styled. Okay, so what we need to if this is to be the tasks so we need to select the class tasks like that uh, in this case we're going to put it back to two okay or 2.53 i don't know that's entirely up to you okay so now uh we just need to give it a bit of spacing this one should go at the bottom here so what I'm going to do uh, for that, I think I will uh, create da, da, da. I'm just trying to think how I could put it at the bottom task item okay Hmm. Display. Let me inspect this. It should have margin zero auto somewhere. Okay. So the date it is margin top to auto. Okay, so task item. Date. Date margin top to auto. So it's going to have 
leave spacing for you know for in between here okay as you can see now we have the spacing okay so that's what we're looking for so we need to format this state like this instead of like this okay um so for us we're going to create a new utility utility function to format the date i'm gonna say format date.js okay so we're just going to use this to format the date to whatever date that we want okay uh, like what i showed you so that's how we have to format the date so I'm gonna say export I'm gonna say const we're just going to export default format date okay and then we're going to pass in the date we're going to format here okay uh for us to make this easy we're going to be using moment npm i moment so moment is a package that can be used to format dates okay so here we're just going to return moment and then we're just going to pass in the date we're going to format so we're going to do day month and year like this so that's how we're going to format the date and then we're just going to export default here export default format date so uh let's go back to task item uh, where we have the date yeah we just need to import format date format date and then we just pass in the date not as an object so we just need to import that uh, it should be format date and it's exported as default okay so we should have the date formatted uh, okay so here's the date it's formatted to our liking all right so now we just need to style these other stuff here so let's go back to the task item and style the rest of the items there so uh, let's start with the h1 okay so we have the date let's do h1 h1 i'm going to give it a font size of 1.5 rem and a font weight of 600 you can give it a color you want and then i'm going to select dot task footer here i'm just going to do display flex and center align items to center and give it a gap of 1.2 rem and then i'm going to target the button in there i'm just going to give it a border none and outline of none and set the cursor to pointer and i am going to target the icon icon i'm going to give it color gray 2 and a font size of 1.4 all right so let's refresh it's taking ages to load my internet connection is really slow okay so now we just need to display to uh, set the edit actually to give it a margin uh, left of auto okay dot edit margin left to auto like that um so i'm going to target the incomplete dot completed and is it incomplete dot incomplete incomplete i'm going to say display inline block and give it a padding a broken color and a border radius okay so the other thing that i want to give it is going to be different colors okay so by default it's set to danger but i want to change the completed to green completed you should have color green back green dark like that okay so there's our tasks so we have in it's wrong spelling for incomplete so it should be incomplete incomplete like that and 
we need to also what do we need here okay i'm just trying to see okay we haven't added the sign up button here we're going to add that later on okay so we have a cursor to pointer so when i click here well, we want to toggle a model okay so first off i'm going to change this font to make to match whatever font i'm using here okay so the font i'm using there uh let me double check what the name of the font i'm using so it's called nito nunito nunito i don't know how to pronounce it so here we are going to import it instead of enter it's just nunito like that and then nunito nunito okay so we have subs subsets it should be latin as it is um we need the font weights so we're going to do weight so i'm just going to do all the way to 800 or the way up to 800 i don't know if it is 900 so let's leave it up to 800 like that make sure you put a comma and then subsets it should be latin yeah and then here instead of enter it should be nonito so that's going to be the font size not the font size i mean the font family okay so now as you can see it's using the correct font family so what we need to do now is um, let's start with the sign out button sign out button so it's in the sidebar okay so sidebar i'm just going to close everything to make sure it's clean components it's going to be in the sidebar okay so here is button it should be a sign out button we're going to create a component for the button okay so button i'm going to do button.tsx it's a client component use client a react functional component in export so this button is going to have a lot of properties okay let's start with an icon icon it's going to be optional it's going to be react.node react node and then we are going to have name name it's going to be also optional it's going to be string and then background background is going to be optional i'm just going to paste in the rest of the the properties because it's a lot so we have the selector and then we have the padding optional border radius optional font weight optional font size optional so everything here these are the properties that we so we have the double click okay we don't want the double click actually uh well, we are not going to use a blob are we so we don't want this blob here we don't want that the border okay uh we don't want this property or this okay so i think these are the properties that we want here uh we don't want this uh selector property as well okay so now i think we have the basic so the type we're gonna have submit type of button or reset okay so here we're going to get the properties this structure why is it not auto com auto completing okay uh we got the properties so now we are just going to utilize those properties first off i'm going to get the theme const theme global state like that and then we're going to pass the theme here theme equal to theme 
okay and uh, let's do style why is there an issue here what's the issue I don't know what the issue is about and then we just set those properties to the styles okay uh, all right so now we just set those properties padding and then we're just setting to the padding so we can do a default padding here as well okay this is a default padding if we don't set one a border radius we can give it a, a default border radius if we don't set one okay but uh i don't think i need a border radius by default actually I, uh, we can have one so the font weight uh, let's set it 500 by default font size uh we can leave it as it is border like that I uh, think that will do it. Why do I have an issue here? Because there's no comma. Okay, so we have default properties. So here we're just going to get rid of this and then we are going to put in the. If we have the icon, only if we have the icon, we're going to display the icon. And then we're going to have name, name, span. Actually, I was thinking to do a blog. Uh, let me see if I did. No, I didn't do it here. So this it's not necessary. I'll save. Okay. So what we need to do now? Uh, let's do const button styled like that. And then I'm going to copy like this. Uh, make sure we import styled like that, and then we save. So we should uh, wait. Where are we supposed to render the button again? Okay, so in the sidebar here. Yeah? We are going to render the button. Okay, so I'm trying to think. Uh, because we're going to be importing an, a button as well from. Uh, we're going to import it from um, Clerk. Okay, so I'm trying to think how I'm going to display. It. But I'll just do this. Um, sign out, sign out, and then it's going to have a position of relative. Okay, and then I'm going to do button in here. The component we created, button like that, and then we just need to pass those properties that we created. So I'm just going to paste in the, those properties. So we have the sign out, the name. Uh, selector button login I'm gonna get rid of the selector and then we have the padding border radius font weight font size and then I'm going to pass in the icon prop icon equal to I'm going to do logout icon and then on click we don't have the sign out yet. Uh, I'm going to save. Uh, let's refresh. We should have a button. So there it is. There's the sign out button. Okay. So uh, we are going to style that. All right. I'm just trying to think. Okay. 
1.5 RAM. Okay, so okay, we need to give it a margin 1.5 RAM. So M margin bottom 1.5 RAM. How many is this? Yep, MB6. So it should have MB6 for margin bottom 1.5 RAM. Like that, MB6. Okay, so now we just need to go ahead and style this button. Okay, uh, I think we need to give it a left as well. So we have. Um, so we have a padding for this one. So padding, but margin. So it should be everywhere. So M six then around. It should be around. So it should be M six. Okay. So now we just need to go and start this button. So we go down here. Uh, let's start with the let's give it a display flex. Let's start with the position. Position relative. We could we could use some style um some tail in CSS by the way. Position relative, and then I'm going to give display flex and align center. And then I'm going to give it a color overflow of hidden. Actually, we don't need the overflow because we're not going to do some effects. I was planning to do some half effects on the button. Uh, there it is. It's looking pretty good so far. And then I'm going to target the icon. I'm going to give it a margin right of one RAM. And then I'm going to give it a color of white, or you can give it gray zero. To I think I'll give it color gray zero to make it not that bright. Let's do gray three. Let's see what we have. Uh, seems to be not working. Okay, so the theme prop is included here. I'm going to inspect to see why the color won't wait. Nine hundred. Okay, for some reason the color. Is not showing. Okay, color gray three. Oh, it's, it's wrong. Sp <laughs> wrong spelling. Okay, I think I'll also do the text. Uh. Did I do a color here? Click. Okay, so for the click, we're going to do on click. We're going to set that to click. Type. Uh, we need to set the type to type. Okay. Uh, we didn't do the color, so let's do the color in here instead. So color. Uh, instead of color white, let's do gray. Color gray two. I think okay and uh, when we have her we're going to let's do a transition transition uh, let's do ease let's do in and out actually and then when we have her we're going to set that to gray zero uh, my co the connection is like really weird for me all right, as well as uh, the icon. So we want the icon to also change color. Okay, so now we should try to, we also need to do this transition in the icon itself. Uh, let's do sign out, sign out, click.
Uh, oh. The sign out is here. Okay, 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 okay. User button. So in the user button, that's where the sign out is. So if I click here, uh, in the original here, so the sign out is here. <laughs> so this one. Okay, I can make it trigger this one. Okay, we don't have a sign out method. I'm not sure if we have one. I think we do have one. So we need to to import the sign out. So sign out. We need to import sign out from use clerk hook. Use click hook. Make sure you import the use click hook. And then we need to do router const router equal to use router from next navigation. And then we're just going to push. Okay. After we sign out. Uh, one click. One click here, we are just going to go to the sidebar here, click. So the sign out we've imported in the wrong wrong component. It should be in here. It seems like we have route already. use clerk okay so now is it is it just click okay so it's a callback function so we have sign out like that but it's gonna take in a callback function Okay. Router dot push. We're just going to go sign in. Sign in like this. So let's see if this works. Uh, let's go ahead and sign out. Click. Okay, so now we've signed out, we can continue with Google and then it's gonna lead us back to the homepage. Okay, so now we can sign out. Uh, what we need to do now, we need to be able to, you know, toggle. So when I click this create task, we want to be able to toggle that okay so i think i'll take a break for now and then i'll be back on the next video when we are going to be working on the toggling of the model i'll see you in the next one okay welcome back so now i think uh let's start by implementing a loading bar at the top here so let me show you what i mean so if i go to my website if i click one of these links as you can see there's a top loader here a, a bar we're going to be using a package called React Top Loader. So it's called React. Actually, it's called Next Top Loader. Like that. So copy this command. Let's open a new terminal. Uh, let's install. Okay, so that's what we need to do. So let's go to the layout. By the way, so. Currently, it only works with links, okay? So make sure whatever you are using to route with is the link. Um, let's go to the layout. So let's import the top loader, ne next loader. 
like this import next loader from next.js top loader. Let's go above the context in the body. Here we're just gonna say next top loader like that. And then we're just going to put a few properties. So the properties, the first one, I'm just going to give it a height. I'm just gonna set that to two pixels. Uh, the next thing that we want is going to be color. Color, let's set that to red for starters. Red. Um, the other thing that we need is an easing functionality. So we're going to be using a cubic, cubic, uh, Bezier. I don't know how to pronounce this. Is it Bezier or Be Bezier? I don't know how to pronounce it. Bezier. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's French. Uh, but now we're going to go and put some properties. Uh, this one should be zero. Okay, and this one should be one. You can kind of generate this. There's a generator for these properties. It's called cubic Bezier. If you go here, you can kind of generate, you know, these properties, and then you can copy whatever properties you want. You can simulate to see what it looks like. So now let's see if it's working. So now, as you can see, when I click the link, it's working. Okay. But I'm just going to change this color here. Uh, I am going to go to the themes and I'll, I'll copy the green dark. I'll just copy the hex value and then I'll, I'll paste. Uh, I guess it didn't work. I'll copy this green and paste. So we should have a nice green color. By the way, if you want to get rid of this loading spinner here, you can. So you can just say sh spinner, show spinner. You can just turn that to false okay and then you have to refresh the page okay so now we have that uh, the loading uh, let's move to the next chapter so uh, let me see okay uh, for now we want to fetch this data when we have the user. So sometimes there might be an issue. So let's go to the context. So if we have the user, I'm gonna say if user, and then we're going to fetch this, the tasks. So you, let's just get the user. Oh, like this. So const user, like this, const user, and then use user coming from uh clerk next next js okay and then we're going to fetch the data when we have the user okay but nothing happens it doesn't update so once we have the user we want to re-render this so we're just going to re-render based on the user like that so refresh okay perfect so now it works all right, so now we need to do loading. So let's do CSS loaders, spinners. Okay, I think I'll, I'll just take any of these spinners. I'll take this. All right. Uh, copy. And go to the global. I'll just paste those tiles in. And then uh, we just need to create a span with the class of loader. So let's go to the context provider. Context provider here. We're just going to return. A div and then let's put a span class name loader like that okay so is you should see a loading here so here uh let's do a class name let's give it width width full and height full 
and then we're going to do flex item center and then justify center okay so it's basically flex centering it here okay for the color uh you can give it that green color if you want to um if you go to the themes uh oops we need to go to the themes i think i'll give it this gradient color here i can't remember which gradient it is so oh it's a oh it's a border <laughs> we cannot do a gradient on a border uh let's primary green green let's take the light one to see how it looks like all right so now let's refresh this oh i think we need to I copy the wrong one color green light I don't know why the green light looks white. Okay, so, okay. So I think th this will do. Um, When it's loading, we also want to do it for this one. We're just going to do that later. But for now, I think what we need to do is delete the task and edit. So let's start by delete. Here I'm just going to create a dynamic route. Okay, so to delete, we're going to delete based on ID. Okay, and then inside the ID, we're going to create route to TS. And then export. It's going to be async. And then it's going to be function delete. Delete. Uh, let's just copy a boilerplate here. Delete. Okay, so we're going to do response. Should be a request, actually, not response. <laughs> request. All right. So we're going to do a try catch. Try catch. Like that, and then we're going to do a COG. Then return. We're just going to return next response. We need to import next response. Like that. All right. So for us to delete, we need the user ID, and we also need to get the ID from uh, from the params. Okay, so. Uh, what we're going to do in here we're going to get the params params and then we're going to get the id like that params and then we're going to destruct and get the id okay so we are going to say const user id so make sure we import the all the out and then we're going to get restructure the ID from params. Okay, like that. So uh, we are just going to check if we don't have the ID and then we're not going to be authorized to delete anything. Okay, so we're going to delete a task based on the ID. So we're going to say const task equal to uh, we need to import the Prisma from the connect, from the utils, uh, from the utils here, connect, find unique. So this is actually not find unique. So dot task dot, uh, it should be delete, delete where the user ID, okay, where ID is close to whatever id we are sending through the from the uh, client okay 
So we're going to delete whatever ID matches this one. What ID you are sending from the client. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Uh, we're going to get rid of this console logs, by the way, like, later on. So this is just for debugging to see how things are working. And then uh, we're just going to return. So uh, now what we need to do is we need to we need to um, send the ID okay from the client so let's work on the delete so for the delete uh, let's go to the global I'm gonna say const uh, delete task equal to async async so it's going to take in the ID okay Going to take in the ID. So here we're going to do try catch, try catch, and then we are going to say cog error, and then we are going to uh, do toast, toast dot error. Something went wrong. Okay, so we're going to do const response equal to axios axios dot delete and then tasks and then id okay so the id we're going to pass in here we're going to delete that item all right and then uh we are going to say toast to success task deleted when we delete the task so after that i am just going to refetch our tasks okay after we delete we're going to get the update refresh the tasks so we have to send the function here. Delete task, by the way, we need to also send is loading because we need to do the loading state. So uh, let's go to all tasks. Uh, the component, all tasks. All tasks. Okay, all tasks, all tasks. Okay, so for loading, read. Okay, let's get the loading here. Is loading. Is loading. Let's create a component for it. Loading. Actually, it doesn't matter. Uh, we just need to add that class name. okay so if if it's not loading not loading so if it's not loading we are going to uh, uh, do this else Like that. Okay, so okay, so you should have loading there, as you can see, loading. Okay, but for this loading, uh, is loading. Let me say let const is loading equal to true. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of this for now. Is loading equal to true? So it should be loading here. Let's tell this pass tasks loader okay so span I uh, can't remember the name it should be loader 
like that so it should spin here uh, we need to center this let's do a can think width full uh, flex item center justify center okay uh, height all right I think we can put it at the center here. I think it makes sense, or you can do it individually. I don't know, it's up to you. I think I'll just do one loader like this. Okay, and uh, I think that's it. I'll just put the proper, I'll put it here. Like that and then get rid of this okay and uh, we should have like a loader for a split second here you can put like a skeleton loader so it's up to you okay nice so you can get rid of, rid of the main loader if you want to but uh that's up to you now uh th now that we have the loader let's work on the delete so we need to go to the task item task item and then the, we need to do a uh, function for delete okay so for that we are going to delete one click we're going to run a callback function okay so for delete now uh, we're just going to get the delete task uh, is that what we've named it yep delete task like that and then we just need to pass in the id of the task that we want to delete all right and uh, uh what delete task and then we pass in the id which we already have here okay so hopefully when i click this it should delete nothing happened seems okay it did delete but there's an issue fetching the data okay uh let's create create content let's create more items shall we submit okay submit 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 okay so we should have a lot of items let me refresh okay so there it is i'll get rid of this create so let me try to delete this oops delete 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 okay so it's working but i don't want this blinking effect let me see if there's a way around it let's try to let's get rid of the loader actually let's just leave the main one okay let's get rid of this loader okay so it should work like this but it's taking a bit of time there's a delay when you delete so it's up to you if you wanna you can put a loader yeah there's a delay uh we need to fix that we'll fix that uh in the coming section 
okay so yeah we can delete now we can delete so we need to work on the editing which is the put method we did for some reason i need to click twice to delete so let me double check the function task item on click why do i need to click twice so click nothing happens click again something happens okay i don't know why i need to click twice um but i'm going to fix that later on yeah we, we have an error as well here so we'll fix it later now let's just work on the editing so when i click complete i want to toggle incomplete as well okay and uh i think i'll do that in the next video okay so i just realized when we were deleting we had to click twice for us to delete the item um i was missing an await because i was using async so it doesn't give you a warning unfortunately so we have to make sure we do await like that that's why we're getting record does not exist because we click twice okay so now let's save so now let's click now it's deleting we don't need to click twice anymore and also the pop-up uh the toast is not showing okay uh we had a wrong import may i had a wrong import not you but i had a wrong one so it should be just react or toast like this then save so when i click it should be able to show the toast okay so the next step uh i think let me go to the all tasks i'm just going to cog all of the tasks response to a data let's inspect to see what we have i'm going to refresh Okay, so we have four items uh all of them should be completed i guess okay so we need to get we need to create some items which are not completed okay but these some of these that are completed it doesn't show it's completed I think we might have made an error somewhere. So let's go to task item. Uh, it's completed. So it's completed. It should show this completed button. So I don't know where we have made an error. Let's go to tasks. Oh yeah, here. So it should be task is completed. It's completed like this. So it should, should be green now. Okay. So now this is the completed task. We need to show the uncomplete the incomplete tasks so first off let's just create more content which is not completed not complete completed one some random date uh, let's just submit random submit 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 okay so now we should have decent amount of data to work with uh, let's refresh uh, we're going to refresh by the way when we are we're going to refresh when we are uh, creating a task when, we when, when we're creating a model so we're not doing that yet so now we need to display uh, the completed the to do and the important tasks so what we need to do is create those pages we have those pages already but we just need to display the data okay so for that uh, let's start with uh, the completed so this is easy by the way to do the completed tasks so for completed 
uh, we are just going to do a filter const uh, completed tasks equal to we're going to say tasks dot filter and then we are going to get a task and then we're going to return task that is completed is completed okay so the tasks that are completed uh that are, have been completed task dot completed equal to true okay so this should be completed tasks completed tasks okay when the completed equal to true and then uh, we should have an array containing completed tasks okay uh, there it is four we have four items here so this is the array it has completed tasks which is equal to true so i'm just going to pass that into our stage completed tasks i'll get rid of the console as well as this console here i'll get rid of it so we have the completed page where is the complete incomplete okay so this is the page for the completed it's going to be easy so we just need to say const we are going to get completed tasks okay from the state global context and then here we are just going to return the tasks component tasks and then we just pass uh the tasks okay like this the title we are setting that to completed tasks and then the tasks is the completed tasks so when i visit the page completed hopefully we should be able to see completed tasks like this okay so now we have the completed tasks we have all tasks completed and now we need to do the important so we're doing the same thing as well for the important we're just basically filtering the tasks to get the important okay so const important important tasks uh, we're going to filter and then we're going to return where important is set to true okay so and also uh so we have import in, completed important we also want incomplete tasks okay so const incomplete incomplete tasks uh we're just going to return uh it's completed equal to false okay so i'm just going to send those values here important and incomplete tasks tasks okay so important just go to the important page we're just going to do the same drill here so const we are going to get uh this is the important important tasks from the global state all right so we are going to get the component the task component and then we just put important tasks like this so we should be able to have the page now so if i go to important uh it seems like there's an issue with the important let's go to the global so is important equal to true uh let me cog this let me console log to see what the important is showing important tasks uh, let's go to the console and see the result so important tasks we do have an array here for the important uh, da, 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 da. what's the property though 
Okay, so is important. Okay, is important. Is important. Okay, we do have the items. I do not know why we have an issue. Okay, so now it seems to be showing now. All tasks. Important. Completed. Okay. Don't worry about this one. We need to give a key. So we are... Okay, so which component do I not have a key on? Let's go to the tasks. So we have a key here. I don't know. Uh, let me find map dot map to see where I didn't put a key okay here we didn't put a key so we need to make sure we put a key here key we can just put anything at anything that is unique so let's put item dot title or ID if we do have one we do have an ID so we put the key hopefully that error should go away uh, I do not know why it's still there okay it's gone now so now we can navigate to these pages. So the only page that is left is the incomplete page. Uh, let me go to the global. I'm going to copy the incomplete. Incomplete. We are just going to do the same thing. Destructuring from the global state context. And uh, we are going to render the tasks, tasks, component, and then this is what we have safe. So we should, this should be, yep, incomplete, important. Okay, so this is completed, the important tasks, all of the tasks, do it now. All right, so I think uh, one of the issue, actually we're going to fix that issue later on. The item that I click, I create first, I want it to be at the bottom. The latest item I want it to be at the beginning. So we need to do some sorting of the items. We're going to do that when we cre uh, create our model. Uh, but I think, that's pretty much it for the pages. So now we need to sort out this button here when we click. Okay, so we want to be able to show the user button. Okay. So uh, we're going to do a bit of a hack. Let me close everything here. Uh, sidebar. So we're just going to go for the sidebar. We're going to do a bit of a hack to do this. Sidebar styled. Okay. So, pro so we have the profile overlay. I want to add a user button after this image dot user. I'm gonna say BTN. Okay. So this user button, I am going to import user button, user button from clerk. All right, so it should be imported by now. So yeah, user button. And uh, let's see, so when I click, we're going to be able to see your account and you can sign out. You can change your avatar, okay. So, uh, what are we going to do for the user button? We are going to set position to absolute, absolute, and then Z index, I'm going to set that to 20, Z20, and then top, I'm going to set that to zero, and then width, I'm going to set that to full, 100%, and then height, Height, I'm going to set that to full as well. All right. 
Uh, so when I inspect, you should be able to see this pattern here. Okay, so we need to style this pattern more in the styles. So because we're going to do more more styles. Okay, so now let's uh, scroll down for, and then we have to find somewhere to style it. All right, so I'm just thinking. Uh, the image. I'm just looking at the reference, how I did the image. Okay, so let me inspect here. So the class name. Okay, so yeah, the one that we want, we need to select this CL, CL root box. Okay, so in the profile, uh, I am going to select CL. Let's make it sure it's use a button like this just to encapsulate this in the user button. Now uh, let's take it out of the profile and put it separately like this. So to, to make it cleaner, so user button, and then we target the root box and then we're going to set the width 100% height, 100%. So it should be covering uh, root box. Okay, so as you can see, it's covering the entire width and height. All right, so, and then I'm going to target the user button box. Oops, copy this class name, CL user button box. Don't copy the lock, locked class, copy the ones which are not locked. Uh, and then we go down. Then we're going to give width and height 100% as well. Okay, and then I'm going to target the button trigger. Button trigger. And then I'm going to set the width 100% height. And then op opacity, I'm going to set that to zero. Okay, opacity to zero. So as you can see, it's not there anymore, but when I click, it shows okay when i click it shows the profile all right it's nicely so it's like invisible but when i click it shows it shows the information about the profile okay you can manage this account you can sign out you can delete the account it's up to you okay so the it's invisible as you can see now, but we want to get rid of. Uh, I'm not sure if there's an outline, but we can get rid of the outline if there is one, but I don't see it. So if you see it, you can just get rid of the outline on active hover, but I don't see the outline. Now, uh, what I want to do, I want to do the image. Okay, to make it dynamic. So what I'm going to do now, uh, image, I'm going to get the image from the user, from the user object. So we're going to const, const user, go to use user, use user object. And then we're going to get the user. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to destructure for some, uh, let's see what the user object is. Again, so I think we've done this before, but let's see, let's go console. So there's the object, the user here. There it is. Uh, it has some properties uh, that we want so we can Destructure 
this here so this is the user so it has the properties that we want so we want the name uh, we want first name and last name and also the image url okay so let's get those properties so we're going to say const uh, first name last name equal to user like that all right and uh, uh what we can do like that and we also need the image url image url like that we need that property and it's going to be an empty string if we don't have it and uh yeah we just need to put those properties so instead of doing this uh, we're just going to put the image url like that okay so uh there's an issue here we need to set uh in the config where's the config next config next config okay so in in the next config we need to set where our images are coming from we need to put the link so next config images the domain so we want to set the domains for our images domains we're going to do localhost and then we are going to do uh, i'll put clerk this one okay and then uh, i'm going to save all right so let's refresh this okay i think we, we need to refresh this restart the project okay so restart the project npm run dev and uh, you just need to reload uh, actually uh, you should uh, okay so it should be working now it's on 3000 now it's no longer on 3001 It's taking a while to compile but uh, okay let's do something else while it's compiling uh the other thing that we want is the name so the name as you can see the name is still not the correct name that we want so for that uh, we're going to, that's why we've extracted uh first and last name of the user okay so here i'm going to get rid of this i am going to do first name first name and last name okay uh, first name and last name actually it's going to be there first name last name like that and then uh seems like we've been signed out okay let's continue with google because we are on a new new port uh invalid source prop okay so host name this one copy this go to the next config and put this in the domain and let's save all right so now so we have first and last name uh we need to capitalize this so class name 
capitalize. So this will be coming from Tailwind CSS, by the way. So capitalize. So we want the first character of the first name to be capitalized, and then the first character of last name to be also capitalized. So now let's refresh this. It's taking its time to compile. All right, so now the image is there now. Okay, so that's the, that's what we're looking for. But what I'm going to do, I am going to change this image. You can change, you can do manage account, and then you can, you know, change the image if you want to. So here, you can do upload image. You can drag the file. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open my public folder. And then I'm going to drag that avatar, continue. And then now we should have the image. We can click and then we can sign out from here. We can manage the account. We can also sign out from here. So the only thing that is left now is to click here and create a new task or we can also add a button here to create a new task up here. You're going to see how we can do that later on. But for now, that's pretty much it. We just need to uh, work on creating a task. Okay, so now let's start by updating this completed. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's open up this route. So we had a put method, there it is. So here we are going to update only one uh one field so uh we let's get the id the id of the signed in user from out and the other thing that we want is the property that we want to change so in this case it's going to be the is completed it's going to be the only property that we're going to be changing we also need the id of the item we're changing the property okay and then we're just going to await uh, request or JSON like that. So now uh, let's just check if we don't have the user and then we're going to return unauthorized like that. And the other thing that we want is uh, this should be in the try. <laughs> this is the wrong place. In the try like that. And after that, uh, let's create a task that we want to update await prisma.task.update and then now uh, here we just update that task okay so in here we're just going to say where id that's the task we're going to update and then is completed is completed uh we're just setting that to this property here Okay, so it's completed property. We set it to that property like that. Okay. Uh, or we can just do this like this. Okay, because it's the same name. All right. So uh, we are updating an item with this ID. We're updating the is completed property with whatever property that is that we're setting from the front end. All right, and then now uh, we're just going to return yeah, uh, we don't need the console by the way. We just re return the response. Okay, so let's save, and uh, that's our method for updating. So I'm that's pretty much it. Uh, why do I have a delete here? Okay, get rid of this. Okay, so here we have uh, put get and post. So here we have the delete in the ID. We could have done the, the editing in this here, but it's fine, we can do here. So now what we need to do is send whatever. So when we click here, we want to update this item here. So let's go to task item. So in the task item, that's where we want to, you know, do the function for that. Okay, so 
actually let's do it in the global global provider and then we do the function and then we get it through through our state so wait a minute so all tasks i'm going to collapse this collapse and then here i'm going to say const update task so here we're going to, to send in the id uh, as well as the property of the task that we want to update in the in this case i'll just do an object here so i'll just do task so this task will be just an object which contains the id and it also contains the property that properties or property that we want to change and then we're going to do try catch and then we're going to do const res equal to await and then it's going to be axios to put but this is the wrong endpoint so we're just going to go into tasks api slash tasks and then task okay so now uh let's do a success we need to call also call refresh the data here and also let's do a toast not root but toast toast does success task updated like this and then we re fetch the data and then here we are just going to cog the error and show an error something went wrong when updating the task okay and uh, that's it for update so now we just need to send in the data from so we need to send in the data from the task item so when we click the task item we just need to send in that data all right so uh task item okay so here we are we're doing on click and then we're going to do a callback function okay so now we do have a callback function so we also want to change the status um of this clicked okay so here when we are updating what properties do we want to update so we're sending an object and then in the back end we are getting that property all right so in this case we're going to do const task it's going to be an object so what we mainly need for in this object is the task id as well as the is completed okay so here yeah. i'm gonna do id and then is completed okay and then we are going to set it to not whatever the opposite of whatever it, it was okay and then we're going to call the update uh, update update task like this but we need to get that from here update update task like this and then let's save so hopefully we are going to be able to update the task so let's try to click this we have an error so update task is not a function update task okay so it depends what button we click so we click the completed so this is completed uh this com okay so let's copy this and also put it here on the incomplete okay so the incomplete is basically the same thing here so let's save and uh, let's click this okay we still have an issue update task is not a function so let's go back update task okay so let's cog here update so, and also make sure the spelling is correct when you are importing 
and make sure you save also the file as well. Okay, update. That was the wrong spelling. Update tasks, so click. Okay, as you can see, it's changing now. Okay, so it's working as expected. So now what we want is to create a task. So for that, we are going to create a model. So in this global, uh, I'm going to create a model. You can, if you want to make this model dynamic, you can sort of const, or do open model. So you, you can put a key here to check, to see what, what key it is, okay? So I'm going to say const uh, model, model, and then set model like that. And then we have a key, so we can put a key like if the model is equal to this key, and then, you know, we can open that model and stuff, depending on what model. Okay, so if 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 it's like this, right? We can be be like if model if model equal to whatever key, and then you know we can do open the model. Okay. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to have this property without a key. So set model equal to true, and then close model. You go to false. So this is going to affect all of the models, but you can add a key here if you don't want to affect all of the models we have. But we're not going to have multiple models, so that's why I'm doing it here. It's fine. And then we're going to have model open close. Okay. So uh, this is the state of the model. So we'll, currently it's false initially. When we click, we're gonna set it to true. When we click this function here, and then false, when we close the model. So now, remember we have the model, uh, in the models, oops, we have the models. So this create, we want to kind of show this when we cl uh, click, when we click this button here in the tasks. So if you go to tasks, so there should be create task. Okay, so we want to go to tasks. And then we have create tasks. Here we're going to do on click. And then we're just gonna do open model like that. And then make sure you get it from the state, global state, and then save. Okay, so when we click, it's gonna open the model. Okay, so now uh, let's style this model. Uh, I'm gonna close the root. We just need to style the model for now. Okay, so actually I'll create the model, the actual model. First model dot tsx. It's a functional component. Use Client, it's a client component, not functional. It's going to be a functional, functional export here. Should be model. Okay, so we have a functional component here. So what we need to do now in this model is just we need like an overlay. So I'm going to say dot model. overlay like that all right and then when we click this overlay on click we're going to close we're going to close the model so here we need to get that uh cons we need close model like this from global state all right and uh we need to get rid of the consoles, by the way. Now we have this. We need to put the content, the content of the model. So the model is going to be dynamic. 
Okay, so we're going to create an interface here. Interface props and then content should be content should be react dot node like that and uh we destructure here and then we have the content okay so whenever we render the model we're going to put the content here so uh let's try to render this model so let's go to tasks and then here we're going to uh, render the model so if model equal to true so we're saying model equal to true and then we're going to render the model uh model so this <laughs> this spelling is incorrect uh but the comp the content that we want is the create content okay so hopefully when i click this as you can see now it's showing the content the content for creating okay but uh, we cannot close this as well because we haven't started this now let me rename this model it should be model all right so that should do it uh yes okay so now uh let's uh start by styling uh let what should we start with let's start with the model itself so model const model styled you go to style dot div so make sure you import styled from styled components. You copy this, replace model styled like that. So now what we need to do, I'm just going to set position to fixed because it's going to be always at the top. Position fixed and then uh, top zero, left zero with um i'm going to give it 100 percent height i'm going to give it 100 vh and then a z index and then i'm going to do display flex and then i'm going to center everything justify content and align items to center okay so it's going to be at the center like that uh we have an issue because uh, tasks models model where is the issue with the import okay now it's working so there it is okay so now we need to style we need to style uh the model overlay model overlay okay so for the overlay i'm just going to give it a, a dark background color and a position of absolute width and height to 100 percent okay like that so refresh okay so when i click it opens the overlay but this con the content we want it to be uh on top okay so we need to give it uh we need to give it a z index that is higher okay so i'm going to select dot model content okay model content and then i'm going to give it a padding z index and the width you can set this to max width max width and then width we set it to 100 percent like that and then when i click nothing happens yet but because we don't have this class here okay so what i'm going to do i'll copy this oops copy and then i'll do like that content And then you see, paste. So when I click, there it is. Okay, nice. Uh, let's keep going with the styles. Uh, let's go to the um to the task. Wait, tasks. 
okay to the create content actually let's tell this so in the create content we want to style that so we should have const create content styled so this should be a form the form so make sure you import styled from start components copy replace so now we're just going to style this uh, let's start with the background so let's get the theme okay so handle submit we need the theme const theme equal to use global state and then we pass that as a property here as a prop okay and then uh, we're going to have access to that in the styles all right now let's start with the h1 i'm going to font size i'm going to clamp okay uh one rem i think i'll do one rem the maximum is going to be 1.6 and then i'll do uh, actually what well, let's do one 1.2 like that all right and uh Font weight, I'm going to set that to 600, 600, and then I am going to give this a box shadow, a background color, and a border radius. Okay, so let's refresh. So we do have a box shadow. Okay. So, uh, now... What we want is to target the input control. Input. Input control. I'm just going to set position to relative and the font weight. And then I'm going to target the input. Uh, text area. Text area. I'm going to give width of 100% and give no border, border of none. And then I'm going to say resize to none, to none, and I'm going to give it a background color and a color like that. So let's see. So there it is. But we haven't actually set the background color for this whole thing, but let's keep going. Uh, actually, what I will do, I'll copy this. Let's go to the global CSS. Uh, Text area button reset border border to none outline to none like that I think this will do it okay so yeah we don't have any more outlines and borders anymore okay so now let's continue with the styles uh, Okay, so now I am going to target the label. Okay, so, so we have the label. We should probably start with the label. Uh, for the label, I'm going to give it margin bottom and a font size. We're just going to clamp that. And then I'll target the span within. And then I'm going to give it a color of gray number three. Okay, so let's save. All right, so looks pretty good. So the thing that we want to do for now is set. Uh, we need to set the background color. Okay, so I'm just wondering like uh, where we could uh, set the background color, but I think we should set it. Uh, in the model content, which which uh, model content?
always the model content model we need to import theme theme okay so make sure we import theme from global state like that and then we pass it as a prop so we shouldn't have that issue uh let's inspect to see why it's not why it's not showing the background color okay so uh, oops get rid of the mobile view model content okay so model co content doesn't show the background model content okay so we haven't actually set the background so let's give it a border radius border radius to one rem and then we're going to give it a background color to color bg2 like that okay uh okay so the shadow is on the input itself but we need to give this sh bring the shadow here okay so what we can do is go to the uh, create content create content box shadow and remove this uh, actually copy this and go to the content By the way, if you want, you can remove this uh, content altogether. The, oops. Where's the model? Oh, there it is. So you can remove this model content. You can put this, these tiles on the form directly if you want to. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll do this. And there it is. Uh, now we just need to give this uh, border radiuses and stuff. So let's go to the input control tasks. Uh, we should be create content. So input control. We need to uh, style more. Okay. So um, let's see. Let's see what we need to do first. So first off, we need to give it uh border radius uh and let's see what color okay input border radius border radius let's do one ram it should work. Oh, what I said to none here. I think one RAM is too much. Let's do 0 0.5. Okay, let's see how it looks. So it looks all right. 0 0.5 looks okay. Uh, you can, you know, put whatever you want here. And uh, the other thing I think that I might want to do is reduce this margin bottom. I think I'll, I'll put it to 0 0.8. Okay, so it should be, yeah, a bit lower. I think we have good spacing. Uh, the other thing that we need to style is the button. Okay, but first off, uh, let me check what styles I've used for that button. So if you remember, this button component here so we need to render the button component button component type submit okay and then uh, we need to give this an icon this should be a soft closing okay and then we have the name 
should be create task and then we're going to have an icon the icon so the icon we're using here let's do plus and make sure you import this plus icon okay and i'm just going to paste in the rest of the properties okay so we have padding border radius font weight font size like that so when i click uh, the button is set to green, but it is a lot of padding. And also, I want to give it a color. Uh, color? What did I... So, we have... The padding is too big. Let's do 0 0.8. And then... 2, 1... Okay, uh, I think let's do flex, flex end, uh, end, can't remember the property, I think justify end. Okay, so I want it to be here, at the right here. Okay, uh, the color, I, I don't think we have a prop for this one. So, let's go to the button and do a color. Okay, let's add the color. Color here, and then we're going to do color. All right. So wait. Color let's let's do gray zero by default. Let's do color color color. Let's check it out. From the console. Okay, so I'm not uh, really fond of this color. Let's try color. Background. Let's do color green. Should be light. Okay, I'll get rid of this. Color. Wait a minute. Let me check the green light. Uh, let's go to the themes. Light here. Green light. There's something wrong with this variable here. But let's try this purple color. I should copy the variable name. Color primary. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I think this is, but it doesn't match our theme though. Okay, uh, we, let me check this one for a minute. We want something that is close to our theme, so let me look for a button. I'll inspect here, I'll copy this color here. By the way, this website is not yet responsive. Uh, Okay, so I'll copy this color here. I like it. All right, I think this is reasonable. Uh, 
and the icon. So we need to target the submit button. Submit BTN, select that. Uh, collapse. And then we go and style that separately. Okay, and then I'm going to target the button, submit button, BTN button. And then I'm going to, I'm going to give an icon, I, color. Okay, I think, I think that works. Uh, when I hover, and hover, uh, let's try to set the background color. I'm going to bring dark. We need to override that. So the important uh, was well, not working. So let's see why inspect. It should be just background, not background color. All right. So hopefully it should work. Okay. We need to <laughs> do important. Still not working. Tum, 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 background RGB. Color primary dark. Okay, we didn't have that variable, so that's why we had an issue. And the color should be color white. Color white. I don't know if it's showing because the colors are quite similar. Okay, this is now white. Okay, I think this would, <laughs> uh, let's do a transition. This should be 0.3. Okay, so now let's uh, refresh. Okay, so now we can have a, I don't know about this white color though. Uh, you, you can try to find whatever color that you want. All right, and I think the uh, other things that we need to do is to do this date. Okay, we need to start this, you know, date icon. Okay, so let's inspect here. Okay, so we need to give this is a class, this, the radio buttons, we need to give them a class. Okay, so, completed. I'm going to give them a class of toggler, completed, as well as uh, this one. Oh, this one is a class of toggler as well. So, down here, I'm going to target those I want to do display flex and align item to center. Okay, and uh, there it is. I'm just going to do justify content. Justify content. Uh, let's do space between. Okay. Uh, wait. 
not the label. I want to do the toggle completed. Okay. Uh, flex. Flex shrink. We need to shrink. Flex shrink. Is it zero? Actually, it's grow. Flex. Grow. Should be zero, right? And this one should be flex one. Flex one. Margin bottom. There's an issue with margin bottom. Uh, margin RAM here. Okay, and uh, yeah, there it is. I think it's too big. Toggle label flex. We're gonna do flex one. Like that, so we want this label to fill the in entire width, okay, and this one uh, flex grow zero for some reason. Oh, I think we need to give it a width. Nothing happens. Let's try this. Nothing happens. Okay, so we need to remove the width here. Label. And it should be input in the toggler, and then we need to remove remove the width. Width. Uh, let's set it to initial, like that. Okay. So now we, if we click this one, it should toggle. And then we just need to set the cursor to pointer. Okay, so we are able to toggle. For some reason the cursor pointer is not working. But fear not, let's go. We need to keep going. We need to style the date. Okay, so for the date, I'm just thinking we need to go to the global CSS. So in the global CSS, I'm going to target the input. Input and then type equal to date. I'm going to style the indicator. Okay, so type. WebKit calendar indicator, picker indicator, and then filter. I'm just going to invert the color. The color is black, so I'm going to invert it to one, which is going to set it to white. Okay, it's going to be the opposite of that. So we're going to do font size. I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to do 1.5 RAM, and I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. So it should be a bit bigger now. So when I click, we can select the date. Okay, we can toggle. So we also need to uh, do checkboxes or input. Uh, we need to do checkbox type equal to checkbox. Okay. Uh, I don't 
I'm not sure if this is how we start with the checkbox. Okay, so let me CSS. Box. Okay, so we should let's see how we can start this checkbox. Is there a better one? Okay, container. Okay, I get it. So, yeah. this one is going to take us a while. So, we have to do a lot of positioning and stuff. Uh, you can do this when you own spare time. I don't have time to create a custom checkbox. Okay, so we are just going to use the default one. But I think I'll do this off camera and then I'll just push the changes on the final version that I'm going to upload on GitHub. But now we just need to, now we are able to add code, add some stuff. Hello. Okay, so now we can toggle completed. So when I create task, should create but it's, it's not refreshing so we need to manually refresh the page for us to see that okay so i'm going to delete so we need to refresh the data every time that we create a new task and as well as we might need to close actually i think you might want to close this right when you create a new task or you want to keep it open it's up to you but but me i'm just going to close it so it's up to you what you want to you can do what you want so create content so we have the uh, submit button submit with what function are we calling here Okay, so f for us, we need to go into the submit and the submit. So somewhere here, we need to get all tasks, tasks, or tasks. Okay, so here we are going to do this or tasks. We can do this first, or we can do this after. Okay, so we are just calling all tasks, and you might want to close the model if you want when the task is successful. You can close the model. Okay, and I'm just going to say close model. Like that and make sure you get close model uh, here close model I'm, I'm also going to do one more final one final check here so I'll take this I'm gonna say if not data if not uh, response dot data dot error that's when I want to do this. Okay, so I'm gonna save. Uh, test data. Hello. And then I'll put a date. Put a date to it, and then I'm gonna toggle make important. And then I'm going to say completed, and then create task. Okay, but the close model <laughs> did not work. Uh, Let's see why. Okay, so our tasks is not a function. Our tasks. Tasks. Okay, because we are not sending that through. Okay, we need to send all tasks like this. 
So now I think we should be able to do it. Hello, two. Just add something random and create new task. There it is. So it's working. So we can delete this. So next, we just need to work on making sure the new task is at the top. Okay, so this is going to be the final part. So we're going to look at uh, media queries. And also, I want the newly created data to be at the, t at the top. Okay, so when we create something, it's going at the bottom. So I'm just going to add something random. And then when I create, it's, you know, down here. So we want the newly created one to be at the top. So what we're going to do, we're going to be uh, sorting the data based on the created date. Okay, so we're just going to check uh, what date uh, it was created. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's go to the global. I'm going to close everything here. Let's open the global context only. So uh, let's go to all tasks. Okay, so for all tasks, uh, let's uh, sort the data before we put the data in the state. Okay. So what we're going to do, uh, let's CLG response.data. We need to get rid of the consoles, actually. I um, always forget. So if we go in the console, yeah, we need to refresh this. Uh, so there's a created at date here. So we need to sort. Okay. So uh let's say const sorted so we're going to return a new array equal to not response to we can do yeah response to data response to data and then we're going to sort so it's going to take uh two values so a and b okay so to sort these we just need to subtract a and b okay Okay, so we're going to return. So we're going to return new date. Okay, so it's going to be new, and then it's going to be a date, and then because the date it's in a, it's in this format, we want to convert it to the proper format that we want. So new date, and then we're going to say b dot created at, created at, created at like this okay and then dot get time get time like this subtract a dot created it dot get time okay so let's let's see cog a b okay actually let's uh, console log Remove this sorted sorted. Uh, let's refresh. So we should be able to see sorted. Yeah. Okay. So the newly created array will be at the beginning. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to put the sorted data as our tasks. Okay in the state so the data in the state is going to be sorted based on the created uh, created at date okay so the newly created will be at the top okay so if you want to get the opposite effect you don't need to do anything but if you want to get the opposite effect using the sort you can just do a minus b okay like this okay so sometimes i always get confused uh, with this one as well so sometimes i start with a minus b and then i realize i need to switch it around so b minus a like that so the newly created data now uh, let's delete some of these so the newly created data hello world and then i just add something random i'll mark this as important and then i'm going to create uh there it is yellow world so when i go to important you're going to see it it's at the top as well 
and then completed same thing do it now okay so here we we're getting the ones which are not completed so if you mark it as complete it's change the uh, the status it will be in the completed okay and then uh all of the tasks will be showing here so now what we need to do uh we need to do the media queries okay so for the media queries uh i'm going to inspect so at uh small size which is let's say 750 750 pixels at 750 pixels i am going to reduce this padding to one rem okay so one rem and i think i should do the same for this one in between okay let me check how that would look like uh gap gap uh let's do one rem okay yeah so gap one rem i think that makes sense so at 750 we are going to uh Let's see what component we need to do this one. So the parent of sidebar. So let's go to layout. Actually, I think it's the global style provider. So we have the children in here. Okay, grid. Uh, gap. Okay, padding here. So. At media screen, uh, we're gonna do end max width. So for our max width, it's gonna be the small screen and media screen. It should be inside like this. Okay, I need to put my phone on silent. Okay, so max width like this uh padding i'm going to set that to one rem and gap one rem okay so now as you can see now it's set to one rem like that and uh the other thing that we want maybe you can add a transition maybe transition let's see how that looks like okay so there's a bit of a transition so it doesn't snap Okay, so now what we need to do, uh, I am going to position, fix this nav. Okay, so copy the nav, copy these styles and go to the nav sidebar. So I'm going to look for the sidebar. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to paste the media. I'm going to say position fixed. All right, so there it is. I'm going to give it a height. Should be 100%. Like that. Uh, minus. Actually, let's do a calc minus one rem for the you know that padding like that uh it should be two rem i think yep like that and let's give it a z index z index uh 100 or 10 okay so then it will be at the top now so we want it to be translated off screen but let's add a button here first okay uh let's name it we need to name it dot togo nav okay so togo nav let's make it a button actually you can make it a div if you want uh, I think 
uh, can't remember what else. I can't remember the icon name, so I need to go to the YouTubes and check. Well, edit. Can't remember what I've named the icon. I think it's bars. We have like three bars. That's that, that's a uh, that's not a good name. Okay, so there there it is. Uh, I'm going to copy this class. A copy. I'll just put it here above the media query. Position absolute absolute. Position absolute. Right. We're going to set it to minus three rem. And then top. Let's set it to ten rem. Actually, let's do five rem. And then let's give it a padding of let's do one rem for now. And then border top radius, top right radius. Let's do one rem and border bottom right radius. Let's do one rem. And uh, we need to give it, we need to give it a background color. It should be color PG2. I believe this should be the padding. It should be 0 0.5. Actually, no, the border radius. 0 0.5 RAM. 0 0.5 RAM. Uh, okay, we probably want to animate. Okay, so. Font awesome. I don't know why I was looking at this picture Wednesday. Oh, one of my friends was looking for a costume for Halloween. So I was looking to see uh, the character she was looking for. Uh, font awesome, font awesome. Oops. Okay, so we need to look for the home um actually menu that's the one we want oh it's called bars actually uh let's do bit all right i'll copy this with the animation and uh, let's go to the icons and replace last name Okay, and we need arrow. So it should be, let's click free. Arrow left. Where's the left arrow? There it is. And let's make the animation. It should be, yep, same. Uh, let's edit here. So by the way, you can do the icons in a way that you prefer, but I prefer this way. Arrow left, class name, and then uh, let's go. So we need to conditionally uh, render. So let's go to the global state. We need to create a new state to see if the sidebar is collapsed or not so I'm gonna say const collapsed okay and I'm going to send the collapsed yeah collapsed okay so I'm gonna check if it's collapsed uh where we sidebar sidebar okay so we need to get the collapsed here collapsed okay so collapsed okay so here so collapsed 
So if it's collapsed, we are going to show the bars. Or if it's not collapsed, we are going to show left arrow. So make sure you arrow left. So make sure you import like this, okay, from the icons. Perfect. So we should have the animated arrow here because it's not collapsed. Okay, so I think uh, I might want to increase the padding that border radius to one. And border right border right border top and border bottom like that. Okay, so let's uh for reposition this right minus three ram. Let's do minus minus thirty pixels. All right, so I think minus seventy three pixels is good. Right, seventy three pixels, and uh. This one should be padding top and bottom. Let's do point six RAM and one RAM like that. Uh doesn't look good. Let's do point A. Point A doesn't look good either. Let's do on both sides. And then we'd need to uh, adjust this. Okay, I think this will do. So minus 66 pixels. And top, let's do 2 RAM. Okay, uh, 1.8. So you kind of find the balance of what you like. Okay, so now when I click, I want to collapse. Okay, so uh, let's go to the global. I'm gonna say const collapse menu like that. All right, so collapse menu. We're just going to we we did set the collapse menu to the opposite of what the state is. So by default, it's false. So when you click, it's gonna go true uh, or false depending on the state. Okay, so now. Uh, let's just go and run this function here. Class menu is going to be true when we click. So let's get the collapse menu. Uh, on click, we want to run the collapse menu. Okay, so now let's see if it's changing the icon. Okay, as you can see, the icon is changing based on the collapse. Okay, and uh, we'd want to make it go away. So, uh, let's put the collapsed collapsed as a prop equal to collapsed. All right. So we're getting an issue here because we're using tab script. So we need to say theme. I'm going to set it to any. Uh, 
let's not worry about theme. Let's just set the collapse to Boolean. What is this tab, uh, tab script? So that's why we're getting the warning. So we set it to Boolean. So we want to check if it's collapsed. So collapsed. Uh, I'm going to say transform. Transform. Okay. And uh, we're going to translate x. Okay, but actually we need to check first. Uh, props dot collapsed dot collapsed, and then we're going to set it to minus one hundred. If collapse is equal to true. Uh, we're going to translate x minus 100% else 0 to the normal position. And then I'm going to do a transition. So the transition I'm going to use is going to be a, a cubic, uh, cubic be uh, bezier again or bezier. I don't know how to pronounce it. So the one we used, it's in the layout. So if you go to the layout, if you remember here, I want to use this animation here. I'm going to do a transition, transition like this. All right. So let's see when I click. Okay. So there it is. It's going away. Uh, I think it should be. Let's inspect. I want it to be. Off screen. Uh, let's do now. So it's minus one hundred. Okay, so I want to leave space like this, I think. Yeah, like this. So it should be out of the screen. So it should be minus 107%. Okay. Minus 107. I think I'm going to also increase the padding. Padding. Top and bottom. Left and right. I'll just do one. Point nine RAM like that. Okay. It looks quite pretty good. Uh we just need to retweak this. Why does it uh padding? Right, so I think minus sixty nine works fine. Sixty nine. All right, so the nav we can collapse it. Okay, I think that's the effect we're looking for. So let's see how it looks on mobile. So let's do iPhone twelve. So what we can do also is we can reduce the font size. I'm looking for iPhone 12 Pro. Okay, so this font size, if it's too big for you, we can reduce it. So, all right. You can also center this around. So yeah, uh, it looks pretty good on smaller screens. You can reduce this picture size as well. Uh, okay, so I think, oh, I forgot to do something. So, uh, collapsed is set to true. Okay, so I need to check something. I want the collapse to only do on mobile. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do media query. 
media query sidebar I'll copy this a cut it should be at the top here position fixed I'm going to cut this uh toggle nav I'm going to say display to none all right so I don't want this and then here display display to block it should be the toggle nav but I want to set the display to block like that and then we save so there should be okay it's still not showing toggle nav display none oh we need to put the media query oh wait we are in the media so at this screen size toggle nav weird okay so the media query doesn't show there let's do important let's see okay there it is okay so it's collapsed all right so like that all right so now i can collapse this when i make the screen bigger okay so when you're going down like this and then it's just gonna hide all right perfect so the media queries is pretty much done i think the only thing that we can work on is the font size you can copy this media screen size here we can go body uh, global Uh, at media like that because we're not uh, we can only nest body you can reduce the whole thing to 15 pixels I think okay or you can do font size I think 50% let's see how this looks I think it's too small all right you can work around this font size here depending on what component you want to change the font size on all right I think I'll just keep the font size that we have even for smaller screens i think it's it's fine it's fine to me so it depends what you want okay so now um the only thing that that we have uh, i'm gonna sign out let's start these pages here so uh we're just going to do that in line so sign up we're going to do it in line so we're gonna say class name flex item center just five center so we want to center this so we are in sign up so let's see sign up okay so we want to give the height to full edge full 
Okay, so it should be centered here. Yeah, there it is. And we want to do the same thing for sign, up, sign in. And we should just center this. So it's just basically display flex, align center, with height full to 100% and align items and justify content center. Okay, and uh, that's it. We can disable these uh, components, by the way. You can start this however you want, if you want to. So for example, if you want to remove this, you can just inspect this and look for a class. So this is the class name. By the way, you cannot select the locked class. So make sure you always select the one which is not locked. You copy that and then you style that based on the class that, that is not locked. So if I want to disable this, I can just select the class and then set display to none or whatever. You can style this, whatever you want. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. Let me try to log in back again. So sign in. So because I already have an account, I'll go to the sign in page. And then we're going to continue with Google. And voila, uh, we are in the application now. So if you want to make any more tweaks, you can do what you want. If you want to uh, make a request, you can send me an email. I'm sure you've seen my email already. This is my email. You can send me an email. You can request any video. Or if you want to see anything in the future, you can let me know in the comment section. And yeah, don't, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.